Council and the uh, special uh, this uh, special meeting is uh, tonight on November 22nd. As is uh, customary, our city clerk will read us the quote of the evening. Thank you, Mayor. You cannot escape the responsibility of tomorrow by evading it today. And Sue picked out that quote for the evening. That's a good one. Thank you, Sue. Roll call, please. Boren. Here. Bauk. Excused. Bowers. Here. Decker. Excused. Hammond. Here. Hannah. Here. Heidemann. Here. Koth. Here. Kittleson. Here. Montemayor. Here. Rinfleisch. Here. Raisler. Here. Sampson. Here. Vanderweel. Here. Versi. Excused. And Wangaman. Here. 13 present. We have a quorum. Now Alderman Hammond will please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Don. Uh, we have a public air hearing this evening pursuant to a notice published by the finance director treasurer. This is a continuation of the hearing on the proposed budget uh, for use during the year 2011. All taxpayers and residents of the governmental unit will have the opportunity to be heard on the proposed budget. <coughs> the original budget hearing was on November 15th. We had some people that were unable to attend that said they would like to speak. So this is a continuation of that hearing. We do have a sign-up sheet, and uh, our city clerk will take it over from here. All right. What I'm going to do this evening is I'm going to call up the first five on the list, and if the first person could go to the mic and the other four could be in the hallway here so we can just move them a little bit quicker rather than you all climbing over each other. Okay. So first on the list is Marge Sigali. Marge, if you could come up to the mic and just hold on for a second. Then can I get Kenneth Risto? Ben, is it Colza? Colga. Colga, I'm sorry, Ben. And Janet Ross. And Andrew Haney. If you could all come up here and just kind of be on the side, that would be terrific. Before we begin, uh, Marge, Alderman Boren, I believe, wants to say something. Thank you, Mayor. <coughs> Sue, I would like to have the addresses of the people that are appearing so I know the, whether they're my constituents or not. You want me to read them? I well, can. when they come up, if they can give their address, because I'd sure. like to know if my constituents are here. Sure, that's Thank fine. Thank you. All right, first on the list will be Marge Sigali. And Marge, could you give us your home address, please? 4605A Amanda Lane, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Okay, and you will have three minutes. Thank you. I am Marge Sigali, and I serve on the Mead Public Library Board of Trustees. I am here tonight to speak in reference to the misconception of the $2,845 that people feel we need to make up for the maintenance of effort. It is $300,000 plus the $2,845. Also, there is concern that if we do not receive the monies to meet the maintenance of effort, Eastern Shore Library System will expel the Mead Public Library for 2011. Please let me state that Mead Library is the biggest contributor and the central focal point of the system. They would be cutting off their noses despite their faces if they should decide to expel us. Our library pays more in salaries than <clears throat> materials and maintenance, and that is what concerns me. I commend the people who spoke at the last meeting. But we all need to remember there are thousands of taxpayers who do not use the services of the library but are still paying for them through their taxes. Our library director's annual salary is $105,000 plus $35,000 with benefits. We now have a business manager who has been promoted to a deputy director with an increase of $5,000 to go with the title. Please let me state there were three no votes and one who abstained. But it still passed. There is a document that is to be introduced to the council concerning the reserve funds the city might be able to use to help the library. Maybe the library should help. 
council and the taxpayers and look at their own reserve funds to see where we could help. In closing, I would like to wish everybody a very happy and blessed Thanksgiving, and I wish the mayor and the council the best of luck in passing the budget in these bad times. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Marge. Next. All right, Kenneth Risto, please. If you could pull the mic up so that everyone can hear you, and you will have, I need your address, please. 1009 Summer Drive, okay. and I am one of your constituents, Alderman Barn. Thank you. And I, you'll have three minutes. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening. Uh, I'm Ken Risto. I'm a teacher at South High School. And because of the three-minute rule, you will not get the 30-minute lecture on the importance of democracy in libraries and the quiz that follows from that. I spent a lot of time thinking about what I'm going to say to you, especially with three minutes, and I was going to give a spirited defense of libraries and the importance of them and funding them, and I know everybody else is going to do that. And oddly, what kept coming back to me is what, uh, words from my grandma Risto. And in uh, full disclosure, she was an alderman. Uh, she, she was a, a, uh, sorry, a Wangaman. And so I, <laughs> my distant cousin here and I, I thank him for his support of libraries in the last meeting. Um, grandma used to say when she saw something really disturbing to me when I was a young man, young kid, you know, Ken, what is this world coming to? And that's what I kept thinking about all this weekend as I thought about what to say to all of you tonight. Uh, what is this world coming to when we know that usage of the library is increasing, that in every measurement that we have, we know that they're using it more and more despite the fact that libraries, like all uh, public services, have been cut, staff has been reduced, there's been furloughs, and all sorts of uh, sacrifices have been made in terms of service. What is this world coming to when we have a community struggling with unemployment and people are trying to stretch their budgets and trying to find ways to freely um, inform themselves and entertain their kids? And we have a budget that continues to cut those very services that help people actually keep some dignity and also allow them to continue to um, have a decent lifestyle. And what in the world is this coming to when after last week's session, uh, which I didn't have a pleasure to attend, but people like me and others came up here and talked eloquently about the importance of libraries. A budget came out less than 48 hours later, which restored spending to every department but the library. What is this world coming to? The library is not a luxury. It's as important to all of us as parks and as clean streets and as safe homes and fire protection. It's a source of economic development, it's a source of our livelihood. Please don't make me quote, make you, me quote Benjamin Franklin to you. I would strongly urge the council and the mayor to not underestimate the strength and depth of support and love that this uh, community, 75% which have a library card, um, really um, care about. Um, I'm reminded of the fact that the, the, several years ago when we uh, underestimated, really underestimated the love of uh, Sheridan Park. Ken. 30 seconds. Uh, the Sheridan Park, we found that the community really cared much more about those parks than we thought. So I really urge you to consider finding some way, in some fashion, to fund this library to keep them in Eastern Shores. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> next would, Thank you next, next would be Ben. Ben, pronounce your last name for me again. Kolka. K O L. K A. K A. And Ben, can I have your home address, please? 2215 North 30th Street. Okay, and you will have three minutes. Thank you. Mayor, Common Council, I appreciate the time given to speak today, and I'm here to bring up another view of the library funding situation. There have been a lot of people coming up to speak on the negatives of cutting funding from the library, but very little talk of the benefits or the relatively small impact it would have. We have a two-year university in our city. <coughs> the University of Sheboygan has an interlibrary loan program with the two other two-year state Wisconsin State Colleges for a total of 13 libraries participating. This, along with the article database, is available to anyone who is a citizen of Sheboygan. For younger students and other citizens of Sheboygan, we have 10 public elementary school libraries, three public middle school libraries, as well as the two large public high school libraries, all of which have public funding to get new materials from. This, along with Mead Public Library as it stands now, provides an imposing collection of books spread across all age groups and provides a variety of ways to gain information for any type of research you are doing. I would propose passing the $300,000 cut as well as working with the school board to try to get more books in the hands of students while in school. Mead Public Library provides a great service to Sheboygan. However, hard times call for hard decisions. The $300,000 should be used to help create TIF zones to spur local business 
or to help provide venture capital for small local businesses. Adding to the existing funding to maintain Eastern Shores Library System membership would be an act of irresponsibility of our city government, which already spends $2.65 million out of a $35 million budget. That's about a tenth of the city's total budget just for the library. That is a huge amount of money. The unemployed workers of Sheboygan need action, and this cut is a first step. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. <coughs> Thank you, Ben. Next. Next would be Janet Ross. Janet, you may have to adjust the mic for your... Yes. And Janet, can I have your home address, please? 452 Oh, your, your address. I gave, I wrote Oh, it. I know, but the alderman wished to Oh, get oh, that. excuse me. That's okay. <laughs> 205 Euclid Avenue. Thanks. And you'll have three minutes. I appreciate many of the eloquent words on behalf of the library, and I agree with them very much. I'm just going to speak about two very personal things. Uh, one being that I've been involved with the Literacy Council over the years, uh, partners in reading, and also adult tutoring. At the moment, I have a st uh, student adult who is shooting for citizenship. He, I have curriculum for these activities, but I make use of the library to bring in extra stuff, <laughs> like uh, uh, level two reading uh, books for to fill out the statistics that he has to learn to become a citizen, to learn the story behind the statistic, and to, in the, in the process, enlarge his reading ability, his pronunciation ability, and things of that nature. That's what I've been doing, spending a lot of time in the children's library, digging up stuff to do that. So that is one of my big interests, the Literacy Council, and reading in general. My se second issue is very personal. I've been involved for over the years with the reading groups that take book groups that take place at the library. They're not enormous, maybe a dozen people who meet several, a couple of times in the spring, a couple of times in the fall. But however, without the uh, Eastern Shore Service, uh, we could not, probably would not be able to do that so that everybody has the same book to read. And I'm really, I have to say, I'm very selfish, selfishly concerned about that. <clears throat> Thank you, Janet. Thank you, Janet. Next. All right. Andrew. Either that or Andrew can come right up here and use this mic. Oh, he could. Here. Why don't we do oh. that? Andrew, why don't you come on up here? Jim, Andrew can't vote for you. Do you need his address? <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll see if he works, okay? <laughs> why don't you just tell us your name, Andrew? Yeah. You can do that, sure. I am Andrew Haney, and I... I am fourth grade at Sheridan. You will ruin the library because the money you want to spend will budget the library education for teachers, kids, and adults. And we go with first graders to the library every month because we read together. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Andrew. All right. Now I'm going to bring the next five up. Could I get Isaiah and Dylan, Savannah, Nancy Lewis, and Alonzo? Nancy, I'm not going to make you stand next to me. <laughs> okay, first on the list is Isaiah. Isaiah, do you want to come up here and say what you want to say? Tell everybody your name, please. Hi, my name is Isaiah, um, and... Uh, I'm eight years old and I go to Sheridan Elementary and um, <laughs> I love the library because it gives us it helps us, it helps the kids what doesn't have to read and it gives us, it, help, it, um, <coughs> it helps the community and it, and it gives people education and <coughs> it, it helps other people. Thanks Isaiah. Thanks Isaiah. Say your name, please. 
I'm Dylan Cauldron. I go to Sheridan School. I like all the books at the library. I like some of the movies. I go to the library every week with my brother, and the library is really fun. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you, Dylan. I'm Savannah Ramos, and I go to Sheridan School. I think we should keep the library open. I go once a month with my first grader buddy. We go to a great library room. We always hear stories in there, and then we check out books together. Thank you, Savannah. Why don't we have you come up next? <coughs> I'm Alonzo from Sheridan School. Kids need books for their education and our teacher, Miss Jurgens, takes us every month. Adults need books for college and high school. School. Thank you. Thank you, Alonzo. All right, you kids can sit down. Is that all for our students? I know this isn't a sporting event, but let's hear it for the kids. <laughs> oh, and we've got more. We'll hear it for them later. <laughs> the kids first. Okay, let's see if I've got all the kids. Can I get up here? Jeremiah, Austin, James, and Sharon is not a kid, so we're just going to have you wait. <laughs> yeah, that's you. Okay, Jeremiah, could you come up? Okay, Jeremiah, just give everybody your name, please. I'm Jeremiah from Sheridan School. I want to help save the library because our teacher, Ms. Jurgens, takes us every week. I love that all the books are awesome. Okay. Thanks, Jeremiah. Austin, could you come up, please? Um, I'm Austin K, and I go to Sheridan, and we. Love the books and DVDs. We want our library. We go every week. Thanks. James. Uh, James is a big kid, I yeah, think. Yeah, you he's... can just stand over at the real mic. <laughs> but I'm going to time you, though, James. So. I do vote. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, James, can I have your address, please? 1312 Pennsylvania Avenue. All right, and you will have three minutes. Okay, I don't know much about anything right now. I got wrangled in by these two little ones right here from Sheridan School. But the thing is, well, you did, but you did. But this library means the world to all the kids, as you've all heard. I mean, it's the only place I can go right now for even looking for any employability. I don't even have a library card, but as long as I bring in my photo ID, they give me a laptop for two hours, put on any online applications that you can think of. The jails, like Sharon Abel over here, she goes there all the time to help anybody there. And it, with all the respect, I mean, if we lose our budget with our library, what's gonna happen with the next coming up elections in the future? I mean, kids have nowhere f to read with their books. They go every month. I mean, he takes, I take him down there at least every day after school just so he can go up to the third floor. They do their little thing, they get books, they get movies, you can even learn your history right then and there. I mean, we always talk about our schools wanting our kids to do extracurricular. What's the best extracurricular activity? A library. Am I right or wrong? You're right. <laughs> Thank you, James. Thank you, James. All right, kids, I think you're all done. Thank you, everybody. All right, can I get up here? Um, Nancy Lewis, Sharon Abel will be after Nancy, and Maeve Quinn will be after Sharon. Maeve, can you come up? Okay, Nancy, can I get your home address, please? 311 Michigan Avenue. 
And you will have three minutes, ma'am. My, hus my husband and I, excuse me, my husband and I and our six children moved to Sheboygan 39 years ago. Number one on our agenda was to enroll the children in school, but a very close second was to go to the old Mead Library on 7th Street and get our library cards. We also got to meet the resident library cat. Libraries are vital to their communities. They are the most democratic, with a small d, of all institutions. Our library, and it is ours, the users, is busy every single hour it is open. Moms and dads with small children coming to story hour, adults of every strike coming to research job opportunities and job skill <coughs> training sites, students after school doing homework in a stress-free atmosphere, business people coming in on their lunch hour, seniors browsing the collections. Libraries are storehouses of ideas waiting to be discovered, developed, and nurtured. Restore full funding to the maintenance of effort level required to keep Mead Library and Easter Shores Library system. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Nancy. All right, next we will have Sharon. Sharon, is it Abel or Abel? Abel, please. Thank you. And Sharon, what is your home address, please? 311 Niagara Avenue. Okay, go ahead, you'll have three minutes. Wow, this is great. <laughs> the civic process in action. There are people up and down the hall and down the stairs, so all of you know. Our Mead Public Library is an equalizer. Its welcoming atmosphere brings together populations from the widest array of socioeconomic levels, cultures, backgrounds, races, abilities, ages, and beliefs. There is nothing else like it in the city of Sheboygan. Those of you who are with the council, if you haven't been there within the last week to visit the library, before you make any decisions, go there on a morning, and then go there on an afternoon, and go there on an evening, and look at the people on every floor. Just look. People with no former ties to Sheboygan have told me that they bought homes in our neighborhood not only because of the nearby beach and boat landing, but because they are within walking distance of the library, our library, Mead Public Library. Our librarians and the services they provide through Mead Public Library and its partnering agencies, including but not limited to Eastern Shores Library System, our pre-K through post-secondary education systems, the state of Wisconsin, federal programs, and local nonprofit organizations are key. So again, our librarians and the services they provide through Mead Public Library and its partnering agencies are key to the unity and positive growth of our community. Sheboygan, Wisconsin, USA. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Sharon. Uh, next is Maeve Quinn. Maeve, can we get your home address, please? Sure, 310 St. Clair Avenue. And you will have three minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Ryan, aldermen and citizens, for this opportunity to speak with you tonight at the budget hearing. Uh, my name is Maeve Quinn, and I'm also the president of the Board of Trustees of Mead Public Library. Four words clearly summarize the mission of our wonderful library. Inform, educate, enlighten, inspire. I do not intend to speak tonight. However, in light of the statements in today's paper that Mead Library has suffered no budget cuts over the years, it is necessary for me to correct the record. I would like to inform you of the following. Over the years, Library Board of Trustees and the staff have worked with a shrinking budget. 
The big picture shows that from 1989 to 2010, there has been a 30% reduction in staff. In 1989, there were 61.9 positions, and in 2010, there are 43.2 positions. This is a 30% decrease. In 2003, there was a reduction of staff hours. In 2006, there was a major reorganization following the retirement of 10 staff members. In 2009, the STAR program, and in 2010, each staff member has been furloughed for five days. This unpaid leave is equivalent to a 1.9% decrease in pay. It is crystal clear that the library has been adversely affected by city budget cuts over the years. I would like to educate you about the impact of the proposed $300,000 cut to Mead Public Library. This is an 11% reduction from this year's appropriation from the city. The proposed $300,000 cut will result in reducing the number of staff members, reducing library hours, and reducing the number of new books and materials. The $300,000 proposed cut will also put Mead Public Library at risk for losing the state-funded services provided to the library as a member of Eastern Shores Library System. We risk losing approximately $250,000 in state taxes. Mead Public Library would need a $2,845 increase to this year's library budget in order to maintain these services. In other words, the proposed 2011 city budget would need to add $302,845 to the library. Even with this increase, we would still need to reduce staff. Some sensible solutions for the city council to think about? Utilize some capital fund money, or two, use money from the city reserves. This is a one-time solution for a challenging economic year. And now to enlighten. It is quite evident that during these challenging economic times, citizens need Mead Public Library services seconds, more than ever. Thank you. And to, and to inspire, Mead Public Library is one of the true gems of Sheboygan. Thanks to the involvement of thousands of citizens, it truly is a wonderful community, information, and cultural center. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Maeve. <clears throat> All right, our next group. Could I have Ed Wachowski up here, please? Jim Hollister, Cindy Morganwick, Tim Van Akron, and Joel Siegel. And first speaking would be Ed Wachowski. Sure. Thank you. And Ed, can I get your home address, please? 2632 North 8th Street. All right, and sir. I'm not here this evening to talk about the library. Okay. I realize that you have a very difficult decision to make because there's only so much money that can go around. So I want to take this opportunity, first of all, to say thank you for allowing the citizens to talk to you about their concerns about the new budget. I put together 10 good moves to balance the budget and increase the income to the city without reducing services and or re increasing taxes. You can read it at your leisure, and I hope that you take these items to heart because it can save money for the budget, can allow you to meet your obligations to each and every department within the city that needs the money. I just want to say thank you again for allowing us to speak, and I will applaud you when you indicate by your vote that you really have heard what the people have said to you regarding the needs of the city. Thank you very much. It's probably the shortest speech I've ever made here. <laughs> thank, thank you, Ed. Ed. All right, next would be Jim Hollister. Jim, you might want to pull the mic up a yep. little bit. And can I have your home address, please? I'm Jim Hollister. I live at 2802 North 6th Street. And Jim, you'll have three minutes. All right, thank you. I just want to speak on the theme of uh, great cities have great libraries. I remember learning in high school and later in college of Alexandria in Egypt. Ancient Egypt had the best library in the, in the, in the known world. A great culture is a literate culture and promotes the generous exchange of ideas. As a child, I remember wandering the stacks of the Groton Public Library in Connecticut, where my mother years later would get her first job after raising us four kids as a librarian. In college, I went to Colgate University in upstate New York, 
Our library was named after one of the presidents of the college, Everett Needham Case, and we quickly came up with the pun that the books were there in case we ever need them. <laughs> we did uh, have some cynical ideas about books in those days, but since my college days, I've grown to appreciate that. In New York City in the early 80s, which I was told recently was one of the worst times in my life for job hunting, I used the public library reading room at 42nd Street and Fifth Avenue in New York City that helped me with the research I did get my first job in the publishing business. Later, I lived in Boston and worshiped in a church right across the street from the Boston Public Library, a great library in Copley Square in downtown Boston. When I went to seminary to become a pastor, I went to Union Theological Seminary in New York, which had the largest theological library in the Western Hemisphere. It was one reason that I went there. And if that wasn't enough, we were adjacent to Columbia University, one of the Ivy League schools that had a nine or 10 story library, most of which was below ground. And it gave kind of a metaphor for me about depth and what books and learning can be about. When I came to Sheboygan in the early, or actually the mid 90s, I was impressed in the job hunting when I came and interviewed with a church that it was one of the 50 best libraries in the United States. That was certainly a selling point for somebody coming from the East looking for a place to start out as newlywed, a married couple to raise our future, hopeful future children. Today I was at the library with my two kids. It was not because of this meeting, but my son has a research paper on foxes and he needed to get work done before Wednesday. So we went for him. My daughter loves to read and I bought some, got picked up some woodworking magazines for uh, future winter projects. So, I would just close by saying that uh, great cities have great libraries. Please preserve this treasure that serves the common good, our good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Jim. Jim. Next will be Cindy Morganwick. Cindy, you may want to pull that down a little bit. <clears throat> and can I have your home address, Cindy? 1953 North 6th Street. And you will have three minutes. Okay. I am deeply disappointed and frankly rather appalled that I and so many others have come here tonight to this meeting to remind all of you of the importance of the Mead Public Library. It is vital that you fund it properly so that it can remain in its rightful place as a focal point for this community. If you fail to fund the library with maintenance of effort, you demonstrate disrespect for our seniors who have made this community what it is today. These seniors use the library to research their current interests, read books they can ill afford to buy, and gather at community events that are sponsored by the Mead Public Library. If you fail to fund the library with maintenance of effort, you demonstrate disrespect for our current workers. The workers have used this library to find their jobs and now use the library to enhance their skill set to enable their companies to remain competitive. If you fail to fund the library with maintenance of effort, you demonstrate disrespect for potential new businesses. These businesses are interested in a high quality workforce, which is found in a community that is committed to the support services needed to nurture such a workforce. Finally, if you fail to fund the library with maintenance of effort, you demonstrate disrespect for the next generation of Sheboyganites, our children. These citizens of tomorrow use the Mead Public Library to learn about themselves, their community, and their place in the world. Mead Public Library is vital to Sheboygan. If you fail to fund it, you are fragmenting the fabric that makes Sheboygan such a fantastic place to work. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you. And did I say Tim? I meant Jim. Read it wrong. <laughs> I just made you an official person. <laughs> um, Jim, what is your home address, please? Uh, I live at 432 Lincoln Avenue. Um, I'm a lifetime re Sheboygan resident and a lifetime library user. I wish to comment on the economic advantages to restoring funding for the library. For Sheboygan to recover from the economic ills that have fallen upon it, job creation is absolutely necessary. If we don't create jobs, Sheboygan becomes a dying community. And how are jobs created? Through new businesses coming to Sheboygan, through the creation of new businesses by the citizens of Sheboygan, <clears throat> and through the expansion of our present businesses. What attracts new businesses to Sheboygan? There are many factors, but one is the education and skill level of our citizens. Another is the amenities, such as our library, 
that we offer to make Sheboygan a community someone would like to move to? How do the present citizens of Sheboygan create new businesses? Through the creative process that comes from the exposure to new ideas. Why would an existing business plan to expand its workforce in Sheboygan? If there is a skilled and creative workforce available to fill the new jobs, they will expand. How does the library contribute to job creation? The knowledge and information available through the library, along with other educational institutions in the community, help develop the creative workforce this community needs. In the global marketplace, we can no longer compete based purely on physical labor. Employees in other countries do the physical worker work cheaper. We need an educated, creative citizenry who can do the work better and create new products. This requires innovation and creativity, which comes about from the exposure to ideas, the ideas found in a library. Whether it's how to start a business, or identifying career paths, or even learning about different cultures with an eye to expand your export market, or perhaps providing a creative spark through the written word, the library has it all. Many people came here tonight who are library supporters with books. I just happened to pick up this pamphlet at the library the other day. Looking to get ahead in the job market? Learn the skills you need to give you a, le a leg up over the competition. This free online database can be accessed seconds, <coughs> through the library's homepage or at learningexpresslibrary.com. Use of this resource requires a library card from a public library in Sheboygan or Ozaukee County and registration at the Learning Express website. Now is not the time to take the short view. Now is the time to show leadership. To neglect this economic engine within our community jeopardizes our long-term economic viability Please fully fund the library. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Next would be Joel Sagel. Joel, can I have your home address? Please? 1522 Alabama Avenue. Mr. Mayor, ladies and gentlemen, I hear budget, budget, budget. I come here quite often. And I think the fairness should be from the top down. And why there's all the automatic raises all the time. That's robbing us our budget. I think it should be looked into a little better and it should be fair for everybody, not just from the bottom, from the top down. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. All right, the next group is Mary Diamond, if you could all come forward. Um, Wade Botsford, Kathy Norman, Laura Clem, and Logan Beenan. <coughs> And first would be Mary Diamond. Mary, can we have, and you might want to put the microphone up just a little bit. Mary, can we have your home address, please? 2027 North 9th Street. And you will have three minutes. Thank you. <sighs> it is kind of nervous up here. My name is Mary Diamond, and I'm a teacher in the Sheboygan Area School District. Raised in Sheboygan to be passionate about books, partially because of my parents, but mostly because of the Mead Public Library. I grew up in a town that treasured books so much, we built a beautiful library and even gave it a wonderful fountain that I spent many a summer day dangling my feet in. It, like the Early Learning Center, should be protected from cuts like these because it's a treasure. I don't know that you fully realize the economic power of that treasure, the emotional power of that treasure, and as a teacher, I really want to remind you of the academic power of that treasure. Children with nothing, and right now in these economic times, we have a lot more children with nothing than we ever did. Those children can go to the library and read. I hope you know how powerful that is the ability to read, regardless of how much money you make, what color your skin is, how weird you choose to look, you can go to the library and read. We shouldn't be cutting this treasure. We should be protecting it. 
tough economic times call for tough decisions, but they also call for creativity. Let's get creative. Put our heads together and get creative. Hold a bake sale. Go green. Hell, if it'll save my library, I'll sit in a dunk tank. But do something to save our library. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Mary. Wade? Wade Botsford. And your 2904 address, Wiedemeyer Street. Thank you. And you will have three minutes. Okay. Uh, the first thing, one of the first things that I did <clears throat> when I moved here from New York was to sign up for a library card, to get a library card, and I'm really glad I did. Uh, I think that that Mead is, is, is a true jewel. I tell other people in other states about it. I got an email from a friend of mine in Virginia the other night. Uh, we, I, I had sent him Mead's homepage, and I'm, and I was asking him about what he reads and what he gets and where does he get it, and he didn't seem to know. I get stuff from all over the place, all over this state, other states, colleges, universities, other cities. I, I've, I've gotten hundreds of, uh, of books from, uh, through WISCAT, and it's easy. I can do it on the computer. I don't even have to leave my home. I don't have to spend a lot of time at it. Um, I just wanted to say that I think that Mead provides a, a necessary uh, service, a great service that's available to everyone in, the, in, the, uh, in our city without regard to socioeconomic status. 75% of the population of Sheboygan has a library card. I think that's huge. All you have to do is go to the parking lot on a Saturday or a Sunday or sometime when you're, when you're free. You don't even have to go inside, which is better, but the parking lot is always full. People are using it. Somebody said that great cities have great libraries. This one is this one's terrific. I'd hate to see it cut off at the knees. Thank you. Thank you, Wade. Thank you, Wade. Kathy Norman. Kathy, can I have your home address, please? Sure. 3217 North 6th. And you will have three minutes. Okay. Um, I. Obviously, you all know how important the library is. You've been hearing it all night. Um, I wanted to speak a little bit about the process. Um, I've been watching this closely because Mead Public Library is probably my most favorite thing in the Sheboygan area, always has been. Um, and it seemed like all along the way, everything was going to have to take sort of an even hit because it is a tough time, and I feel awful for all you older persons having to figure out how to pass this budget. Um, but then I left town for a week, and I came back, and it was very odd that suddenly everything was restored except the library. And in fact, when I tried to go through the papers as to what happened in the last week, it was, wasn't even discussed. It was almost as if Mead Public Library was an afterthought or it was a non-entity. Um, and I can tell you from having stood out in front of the library a few times in the last couple weeks um, on behalf of this group um, that's very, very concerned about the library, um, I, I'm more convinced than ever um, how importantly this community feels about it. I just could not even believe the, the testimonies that I received from people walking in um, about how it was the center of their existence. It was their lifeline. Um, and so I'm more passionate than ever that the city needs to do something um, to make sure this treasure doesn't get cut, even if it means using the reserve fund. I assume that's what a reserve fund is for, is emergencies. Um, but I guess I'm sort of confounded as to why everything would be suddenly saved um, in the city except for the library. So I would urge um, the city council to do what it takes, uh, whether it's proportionate cuts, uh, whether it's um, you know using the reserve fund, but find a way to save the library's funding. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Next would be Laura Clem. Laura, can you give us your home address, please? That's 4 North Point Drive. And you'll have three minutes. OK, thanks. I don't need that much time. OK. I just want to, I'm not a lifelong um, Sheboygan resident. I moved here in the year 2000. And one of the first things I did when I moved here was find Mead Library. And I was um, very pleased to see what a great library it was. I've lived in communities without great libraries. Um, my son, who is now six years old, uh, we go at least once a week. He has been participating in the summer reading program since he was four. And 
Um, I just wanted, for people who don't know, I mean, he's a kindergartner at Grant this year. Um, he gets 15 minutes in the school library and he gets to take out one library book a week. Um, we easily, we can read one library book in 15 minutes. So um, we really need the library. Thanks. Thanks, Laura. Thank you, Laura. <clears throat> and Logan Beenan. Logan, you may want to pull the mic up a little bit. And can we have your home address, please? I live at 1817 South 15th Street here in Sheboygan. And you will have three minutes, sir. Thank you. Uh, thanks to the council and the mayor uh, for giving me this chance. Um, I commend the council for the energy and the time they give to the city. I honor that commitment. And I'm particularly pleased because my 6th District Alderman, Bill Wangaman, is here. And uh, we've talked about this before, and I've phoned him and other older people. Uh, I was born in Sheboygan here in 1933. I only say that because maybe it gives me a little seniority. <coughs> and um, I taught at South High School for almost 30 years, an English teacher. But my story is not to say anything that's been said this evening so well, so often. I think you get the point that the library is uh, a wonderful gem, something not to be uh, let tarnish. Uh, my story is about a little girl that cried. Um, the little girl is my daughter Emily. She's a teacher in Albuquerque now um, in the first Native American school in Albuquerque. And uh, when she was nine years old, we went to the library with Emily and uh, several other children of mine. And she came out with 18 books, 18. And the librarian said, you can only take out 12. And she began to cry. <laughs> and where does that story lead? Well, uh, it's been said so often tonight. You, you go to the library in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. It's, it's a crossroads of Sheboygan. And there are young and old there. It's a very democratic, deserving institution. So I ask um, the council, uh, among the number are, I believe, some of my former students, to um, please fund the library and keep that, that, that wonderful gem of Sheboygan's well polished. Uh, thanks for the time. Thank you, Logan. Thank you, Logan, and my former teacher. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next group we have Michelle Miller, Chris Rainitz, Claire Andreessen, Patricia Denolfo, and Elizabeth Hoffman. Could we have uh, Michelle up first? Michelle, can you give us your home address, please? Yes, I'm at 711 Huron Avenue. And you will have three minutes. Okay. Um, I'm here, I'm another supporter of the library, and um, I just wanted to make an observation. I was at the meeting last week, and I heard 16 uh, different library users, uh, young and old, all um, get up here, and we all know that public speaking is the number one fear in people, and yet 16 people last week, and I don't know how many, almost that many, if not more, this week, um, are willing to take on that fear just to show support for the library. And um, just what an awesome community of people we have that love to learn and love to read and love books. And uh, we should all be uh, really ecstatic that we live in a community with that kind of passion for learning. And um, I, I think that we should be uh, celebrating that and uh, continuing the support for the library. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. Chris? Chris, can we get your home address, please? 525 Pennsylvania Avenue. And you will have three minutes, ma'am. Um, I just want to tell you my history. I, my great-grandfather, George Heller, was one of the founders of the library. And uh, I'm very proud of that issue. I also uh, 
believe that the library is very important to this community. I have had the opportunity to bring people from the State Department, from foreign countries in there, and they say, what's in the water here? Why are people using this facility so profoundly? They come in at night and they see it packed with people. The, uh, how, another thing, uh, a vignette, historical vignette, I, I take it with the head of personnel for the city of Sheboygan, uh, uh, Peter Young said to me, you know, there's nothing more sacred in this community than the library. You just can't touch it. And he, and he said, I don't understand that. Okay, I grew up in this town, but I still don't understand the sacredness of the library. And I, I guess I, I want you to preserve that sacredness. And, you know, I personally would, you know, the fire department is a, an issue that we've all been fighting. I'd give up my fire station for the library. So, I mean, I, f I feel that profoundly. And I also feel that maybe I shouldn't speak for myself, but I should speak for the people that have the less amount of money in this community. I have the opportunity my parents gave me for a great education. But the people that have no money have a starter. They have an equal opportunities opportunity to go from where they are to a full employment and full uh, fulfillment of their talents, and I want, I want you not to take that tool away from them. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Next would be Claire Andreessen. I got that right because your parents were here last week and they corrected me. Yes, they were. <laughs> um, Claire, can you give us your home address, please? Uh, 313 Michigan Avenue. And you will have three minutes. Um, I I'm not very prepared for the speech. I did not know I was coming until about five minutes before we left. <laughs> Didn't even actually know it, that there was a meeting. But when I heard, I knew I had to be here because the library is very important to me. Um, I'm 13 years old, and I don't, I've been reading for a long time. I don't even remember how young I was when I first got my library card must have been like first grade kindergarten when I first got my library card. And some of my fondest memories are of being curled up in one of the blue chairs at the library, having my parents read to me or reading the books or choosing the books there and having fun at the library. And even now, the library, we still need it now that I'm 13, I still need it to find things when I'm doing p research for papers and when I, because our school library doesn't always have all of the books that we need to do the reports. And I guess that's all I can say. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. <clears throat> Patricia? Patricia, can you give us your home address, please? Yes, I can. 2329 North 3rd. And you'll have three minutes. Thank you very much. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, council members, and citizens. I'm here tonight as a teacher of English language learners at Urban Middle School. And I come tonight to be the voice for the immigrant children here in Sheboygan who are learning English as a second language. Um, almost every time I go to Mead Public Library, I see my students there, and they come rushing up to me with a big smile because they ask me, can I get extra credit for being caught at the library? <laughs> I don't need to give them extra credit. They're earning their own extra credit at the library. And I'm so proud to see them there and so happy that these children who may not have the means at home to have a computer and that's online with internet services, they don't have books, they come from families where reading is not a priority, and they have this wonderful, welcoming, happy place to go, and they might even be spotted by their teacher there. So I urge you with all my heart that you will please consider these children, they, who are our future, all the children of Sheboygan, but especially remember the English language learners tonight as you make this decision with the, about the library's future. 
And on a personal note, I just want to tell you that my little grandson, Andrew, has been up to the third floor and thoroughly critiqued the truck section of the children's library, and he finds it to be excellent. <laughs> so thank you all very much. Thank you, Patricia. Thank you, Patricia. And last on our list is Elizabeth, Elizabeth Hoffman. Elizabeth, you may want to pull the mic a little bit. <clears throat> Can you give us your home address, yeah, it's please? 4709 Douglas Fir Lane. I'm in the town, so I'm not under you guys. <laughs> well, you still have three minutes. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Good evening. Um, my, my life has been touched or blessed twice by adoption. My children are both from Russia. And my husband and I use the library to research adoption, to research parenting, to research Russia. And if the library wouldn't have been there, I don't know what we would have done. We learned about Russia as a country. We learned about parenting. And that helped us make our journey to Russia twice to, make, to build our family. And now my daughter, who's eight, likes to go to the library to research her homeland and to find out about where she was born. And when you adopt, you kind of stay home, you bond with your child. And the library was the first place that we really ventured out as a family. And it was a safe place, and it's still a safe place. And it's still a place that my children feel at home. When I was coming here tonight, my daughter asked me, why are you going to this meeting? And I said, well, I really want to save the library. And she said, well, who doesn't like the library? <laughs> and I said, well, it has to do with money. And she said, really? Don't they like reading? So please, for the children of this city and the town, please support the library and it's in continuation so my daughter can learn more about her homeland. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Elizabeth. That's it. Is all, uh, do we have a motion, uh, President Kittleson? Close, close the public hearing. Second. We have a motion and a second to close the public hearing. Is there any discussion? If there is none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The hearing is closed. Thank you, everybody, for speaking this evening. <laughs> you can get away with that now. <laughs> Yeah, we will uh, recess for five minutes. Thank you. Okay, welcome back, everybody. Carrying on, we are looking at uh, resolutions introduced three. Uh, SP 1-1. Uh, resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute a shared <laughs> savings agreement with Wisconsin Power and Light relating to the financing of the purchase and installation of two 200 kilowatt capstone micro turbines for the wastewater treatment plant. That will be referred to finance. Um, SP 1-2, a resolution authorized settlement of claim number 42-09 of Charnett L. Boyd and Sarah Patton, mother of Charnett L. Boyd, in the total amount of $4,250. Alderperson Koff. Thank you, Mary Ryan. I move to suspend the rules. Second. We have a motion to suspend and a second. Any discussion on suspension of the rules or any explanations needed? I understand this is a claim that has been out there for some time and they want to get it settled. Gotcha. Is there anybody opposed to the rules being suspended? There are not the rules are suspended. Please okay. continue. Thank you. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Boren. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Hammond. Abstain. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. And Wongaman? Aye. 12 ayes, 1 abstention. Motion carries. Matters laid over. We have 15, 16, 19, 50, 51, 52, and 16, 23. Uh, 16, 23, and 24. 
regarding the budget, correct? And 153940 and 41. President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. Regarding these budget documents, uh, I would ask for a motion to accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, and pass the one resolution, namely 16 24. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Regarding budget documents under discussion, we have a motion and a second to pass. Mayor, would you run those numbers by me again, the documents? Numbers. On the document numbers, we have 1516, 1519, 1550, 1551, 1552, 1623, 1624, and 1539, 1540, and 1541. Thank you. We can do a roll call doing all of them, yes. Okay, if there is no dis... Alderperson Kath? Uh, thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, my question is on 1540 and 41. That's dated November 1st, oh, yeah. but something came to light last week. Are, is that, are we voting on the old budget or the new and improved? Uh, this is, this, just this is voting on the budget documents. The actual Thank budget you. itself uh, will be discussed on resolutions 1532 and 1533 coming up. Alderman Kahn, these are more housekeeping, all of the standing committees right. but reporting we're filing, out. Filing 40 and 41 or? Right. Just filing, it's not. They're just, all, it's just all Except housekeeping. Filing. Yep. Very good, thank you. Okay. Um, we can do all eyes on these, right? Uh, let's do a roll call. Okay, if there's no further discussion, roll call, please. And just so Alderman Bourne knows, I have a huge star next to your name. Thank you. So I don't forget you. <laughs> Bowers? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wonkman? Aye. And Born? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Okay, then we have discussion and possible action on the 2011 budget documents. Uh, there's a typo on here, correct, Sue? Uh, apparently, yes. Uh, they are 1532 and 1533. The document number, but the resolution numbers are right. Yeah, the resolution numbers are correct. We have resolution number 130-10-11 by Alderpersons Hammond, Balk, Boren, Rinfleisch, and Raisler, ordering the 2011 budget appropriations for the City of Sheboygan funds. And then we have resolution number 129-10-11 by Alderpersons Hammond, Balk, Boren, Rinfleisch, and Raisler, ordering the 2011 budget appropriations and the 2010 tax levy for use during the calendar year 2011. Under discussion, Alderman Hammond. Oh, no, we have Alderman Boren. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I need a clarification on the wording of uh, the discussion and possible action on the 2011 budget documents. Uh, I take it that this is just only gonna be discussion tonight and we're not gonna be moving uh, to pass the budget tonight, is that correct? We will not move to pass the budget this evening in order to uh, get feedback uh, on tonight's discussion. Uh, I believe that this evening we should uh, have discussion. We can make amendments, um, seeing as our next council meeting uh, cannot be uh, until Wednesday, which happens to be Thanksgiving Eve. I would hope to iron out uh, all discussion on this this evening if it takes us until tomorrow morning uh, so that we're not here uh, until Thanksgiving morning on Wednesday. So we are not going to actually take a vote on it on the, on the final budget. However, uh, we, uh, I would uh, anticipate that we will have uh, amendments this evening and that we could uh, vote on those amendments, but the final vote on the budget will not be taken until Wednesday. That way, if there's anybody that has changed their mind, would like to do any amendments, they can be done on Wednesday. Does that make sense? That's what it is. Uh, Steve? Just to clarify, Mayor, in order to get the, uh, in order to make an amendment, the motion or the resolution needs to be on the floor, so somebody, you need a motion and a second to put it on for passage, but it's my understanding from the council's action at the previous meeting that you agreed 
uh, you would not take final action on the budget until no earlier than next Wednesday. So this, this Wednesday. This Wednesday. This Wednesday. Right. Two days from today. <laughs> so then. Which okay. technically would be the next Wednesday. Got President it. Kittleson. Yeah, and I just I want to just clarify that the action is that we transfer to Wednesday night's mm -hmm. council meeting for passage. transferred. Correct. Um, well, or, the or the, the idea is to iron discuss. out everything this evening, make amend amendments this evening, and go in Wednesday with a with a with document to, to a vote document. on. Mm -hmm. That gives people 48 hours to change their mind, okay. if they would so like. That I don't, is know. What the I don't know how many are. fans they'll have on Wednesday if they do, but. That, uh, that gives everybody 48 hours. Thank you. Do we have a Alderman Vice President Rindfleisch? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so we can uh, take action or at least start, begin discussion on there. I will make the motion to uh, uh, pass uh, both resolutions 130-10-11 and 129-10-11 this evening. Uh, if that's seconded, uh, Second. I will also announce to the committee that I'll ask to hold it for, uh, later on for um, discussion or final vote then on Wednesday. Uh, for the sake of the elder person's concern that we, again, we can't pass it today, but I make the motion so we can at least bring it to discussion. Very good, we have that motion in a second. We are under discussion. Alderman Hammond? It's supposed to be blinking. I don't know if it is on your screen. No, it's not blinking on mine yet, oh. but you can try again. If All right. Oh yeah, it is, there, there it is. we go, okay. All right, um, thank you very much. Uh, for those that were at the Committee of the Whole meeting, um, we introduced a, this is for the general fund at this point, um, not the library, but the general fund. Um, we introduced a, uh, a plan, and I guess my uh, uh, motion would be to approve the plan as, or um, approve uh, the amendments as presented um, uh, for the 2010 general budget, Second. general fund budget. We have a motion and a second on the uh, proposed revisions to the 2011 uh, general fund budget. Under discussion, we have Alder Person, Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Alderman Hannah, I think for clarification for a bunch, for several of us, could you just go through the document and explain it a little bit so we know exactly what's being saved, what's being cut, and where the money and stuff comes from? Alderman Hammond, please. Absolutely. Um, to start off from the, the top um, under the administration, um, nothing new will be added to that um, area. <coughs> under the police department, um, there was a 40, 441,000 proposed reduction. Um, we are um, going to um, only reduce by 198,000. Um, and so there'll be, <clears throat> excuse me, $213,000 um, addition to their budget, or back to their budget, I should say. It's not Alderman, increasing. Alderman Hammond, if I can explain yeah. something to everybody here. Um, in, the, in the first column is the original proposed reductions. The second column is the revised reductions. So if you look under administration, administration, um, is, uh, we're eliminating two positions for $202,000. Police, we're eliminating. Um, we're not eliminating uh, any positions. No positions, but there is $198,000. In, in revised reductions on there for the police department. If you can, I just want everybody to know that what the columns mean here. Right. Mm -hmm. um, uh, fire department, again, as the mayor explained, uh, uh, public works, um, revised reductions of 107,000, um, cemetery can self-explanatory, um, in addition for the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation. Um, so the whole, if you will, that we're, uh, trying to fund is about a million eighteen. Um, under the additions, if you will, or how we're gonna uh, fill that gap, 200,000 coming from keeping the rate uh, the same as it was in 2010. Um, 434 comes from four uh, full-time um, employees out of the Public Works Department and um, their $134,000 increase to their medical. Um, 100,000 from contingency. Um, they have this facility development manager. It's actually the uh, development director position. Um, that would be 120. We would not fund that, although it would stay in the table of organization for 20, 2011, but we would not fund that position. Um, 125000 from the motor vehicle fund for the administration. Currently, we do not charge or cost anything back to the city for um, the work that we do on behalf of the motor vehicle fund and in uh, capital park improvements um, of 35,000 to um, fill that gap of roughly a million eighteen. So that would be again in the general fund how we'd be able to continue to fund the police, the fire and um, not have any layoffs um, within 
DPW or any of those organizations. Um, Corey, is that? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. You're welcome. Alderman Sampson. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm sorry, just if I go through and total those numbers up, I come up with a little bit less than the million eighteen. Am I missing a number? I came up with 902 rather than the million eighteen. If we add up those numbers with the revised deductions, nothing being changed in some of them, I only came up with 902,000. Am I missing? Um, no, there's... They're there. They're there. You add up okay. all the... Okay. Uh, all the 202,000 from administration. I'm sorry to, to go through this, but 213,000 now would be the number for the police. Oh, oh no, which what, column are you... Which, are you well, in that case, red? if you're saying the, the new revised deduction amount would be less $198,000 for the police, so that means the new... No, actually, oh, uh, no. That, that is kind of confusing because what we have here, uh, 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 Alderman Sa Sampson, is... Uh, uh, the, I think the original proposed reductions, uh, $1.7 million deficit, right. if I'm not mistaken. Um, the revised reductions of 516000 So does that math work out that way? No, that doesn't work either, no. does it? Are we keeping the 246000 for the COPS grant and moving that all the way over as a... Uh, that, still, that still gives us more than the $1.08 one eight million. I'm still a hundred thousand difference. Jim. Take uh, take those four numbers. Which two thirteen two seventy one four thirty four hundred thousand. Why comes up to a million eighteen four hundred thirty four thousand. I thought was a uh, a new subtraction then off of the total. Um, that DPW we, we was started doing. out with yeah. We, well, we started out with uh, uh, five hundred and forty one thousand being cut in DPW. Right. And we got that. Uh, we we revised that uh, up. Uh, 107,000 so we came came up with uh, 434 on there that that they that they're coming up extra taking out uh, right? that DPW is is getting cut at $434,000 so getting cut 434 so so the public works no they're not getting cut 434 they're getting cut they're giving, 107 they're conceding an extra 434,000 off of that so really they're they're only coming up with budget deficit there in that case is 107,000 oh, correct. correct so if i add if i um, um, if, I, if I add 202,000 for administration, that didn't change. Uh, the police changed, came down more of another extra 190,000. So their total then that, that we need is 213,000. Originally the, it was 441. Okay, if we go, if we go back to DPW, okay. um, we have a total of 434 in reductions, being 134,000 in the raise that they're giving up. Okay, which is actually raised slash paying into their right. health benefits. And four full-time equivalent positions that they are giving up in, in DPW at $300,000. So instead of 541000 the deduction then would be? 434 So that means the amount that we're looking short is 107000 107 No, at, at they, the were, they were initially 541000 short. Then they're cons they're they're giving back four hundred thirty four thousand right. of that, right. which means right. the new total was one hundred seven. Yes. Right. Okay. So if I add two hundred two for the administration, the two thirteen for police, two seventy one for the fire, public works now is one hundred seven, nine thousand for the cemetery, and then the hundred thousand for SC EDC. That gives me nine hundred two thousand, not one, not one million. Am I missing a line? Well, the, the, because if, if DPW the, is giving back, so to speak, 434,000, the amount that we're still short is 107,000. If we take Kevin, uh, don't don't the 202 basically means that the the mayor's original proposed this budget is, that was the original proposed shows that budget. we're going to cut 202 out of the general administration. The revised reduction just says it's still going to stay at 202. 
So that's a non-factor. That line really okay. shouldn't even have been in there. Right. Okay. Um, so I understand where the, the confusion might come, but that's a non that's a non-factor. Okay. So then I think I'm off right there. Then I think that's yeah, that yeah. that million that million eighteen thousand is strictly the the last column added up there. Police department, yeah. The 441 was in the 246 for the COPS grant was the initial cut we made from the code. The 246 COPS grant is we keep the six patrolmen and stay in the budget. Right. Of the 441, 198 was for three patrolmen that were not funded in 2010 for the request of the two patrolmen. We said no to that. We added back 200. Yeah. Jim, can we have you come up to the mic that we can hear you in the council chambers, but the folks at home can't, uh, uh, can't catch on to I think your the wisdom. Confu the confusion, I think, is on the police line. In the $441,000, there's $198,000 uh, that Chris uh, requested for three policemen that weren't funded in 2010, that were there in 2009. We didn't fund that, but we reinstated the six patrolmen or the seven police officers that we put in the original budget to reduce the police department. That was 243000 and then a later development was we uh, estimated there was a grant available for $30,000 to help fund that two forty three. So I just put the net number 213. So when you do the math across, the 198 and the 213 don't add up to 441. Mm -hmm. They're thirty thousand dollars short because of that grant uh, that we realized uh, this past week, last week actually. The three new patrol officers for the cops grant would be in the funding, uh, in the budget for 2011. The six firefighters would be in the budget, uh, representing the 271 thousand uh, for 2011. Public Works originally submitted a reduction of 541, which included a, a lot of uh, non-people related costs. Uh, some were for tipping, some was for ice uh, melting and stuff like that, as well as some cutbacks on maintenance and some uh, park rec uh, type items. The $434,000 represents the equivalent of four full-time people and a give back of the 2011 raises scheduled in January and June of 2011. As you can see on the bottom, uh, also we added the SEDC contribution of $100,000, which was omitted from the 11 budget. To balance this back, um, to keep the rate the same uh, on the uh, city taxes of 836, uh, we'd get a levy increase of $200,000, keeping the rate the same year over year uh, but the current rate came in at, eight, at 828 versus 836. On the public works side, uh, they offset <coughs> the additions by uh, two people that their jobs uh, weren't eliminated, but they left their positions uh, in November of this year. And also two people that will retire, one in January and one in uh, beginning of March of 2011. In addition to those four bodies they gave up, uh, they also gave up their 2011 salary increase. So that makes up the 434000 The contingency is the contingency we had in the budget. Uh, on a $34 million budget, we had a, a line item that we've historically had in the budget for contingencies, something that may happen. In this budget, it was $100,000, um, $100,000 on $34 million. Uh, is a pretty small number, so we might as well move it over to save save jobs, and we did that with 100. That was not from any reserve. It was from a contingency we had built in the budget. The city development um, job uh, we have in the budget, it was for a director's position, not a manager, manager's position. Uh, that's my bad. Um, that was $125,000. We pulled that out of the budget albeit we left it in the org chart so that we could fill that position, hopefully, if there were monies available in 2012. And offsetting that with the help of SEDC, uh, it helps support not having that position during the year. The Motor Vehicle Fund of $125,000, um, 
We do a lot of admin work, uh, whether it's in finance, human resources, uh, general counsel, uh, for the fund. Um, and in the past, we have not allocated costs to that, so we allocated costs this year uh, from the motor vehicle fund to help fund the general fund. In capital park improvements, uh, in the capital improvements plan, we're doing a lot of work, work on parks this year uh, from the standpoint of there won't be any money available uh, in the next year or two because of the road projects we have. <coughs> uh, so we eliminated the $35,000 line item um, for capital improvements other than buildings. And that goes, that million 19 offsets the million 18 we had on the top. Does anybody have any questions relating to that? You may want to stay up there, Jim. We have uh, Alderman Boren. Thank you, um, <clears throat> Mayor. I had a discussion with you earlier today, uh, Director Amodio, and that is what will be the... Uh, so much for having a store <laughs> next year. <laughs> 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 Uh, the discussion I had with you earlier today, what, what is the, uh, budget that we're, the budget deficit that we're rolling over for 2012 with this agreement here? And I think your answer was about a million dollars. And then I also questioned you about the fact that we not only have this million dollars, but we also have to negotiate contracts next year. Uh, we have to find out what, it, what the increase in our health insurance is going to be for 2012. And we also have to find out what additional money is going to go into the Wisconsin Retirement Fund for 2012. And then the other uh, big elephant in the room is what the state's going to do to us because of their $3.3 billion deficit in their next budget for 2012 and 2013. So I guess my bottom line question is, in addition to the million, what would be our worst case scenario as you, as you project for 2012 with all of the other factors that I mentioned? And uh, how would you go about making that uh, whole less? Thank you. You're welcome. Want me to answer that question? Yes. Hypothetically, that million could be five million. We don't know because it's a hypothetical question. Um, we don't know what's going to happen on the state level as far as Wisconsin Retirement Fund goes. Uh, we don't know uh, where our health insurance is going to go. We've been taking steps to try to uh, um, steer behavior on our health insurance and, and how often people are, are going for office visits, et cetera, and we will continue to do that. Um, on the other hand, uh, we don't know uh, with the new administration in Madison um, what will happen with meet our laws. We don't know what will happen with contributions to the retirement fund. Yeah, it goes both ways. Uh, right now, if we were to do the budget uh, for 2012 tomorrow under the rules we're operating in right now, we have a million to a $1.2 million deficit. Um, one thing that I can uh, uh, say, and I've discussed this with yourself, Alderman Boren and Alderman Hammond and several other uh, alder persons here, uh, is that uh, as soon as this budget is done, we're going to activate the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee uh, we're going to start the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee consists of the uh, uh, five chairmen of the standing committees in the city. And we are going to begin uh, reviewing uh, with myself, Director Amodio being the numbers man in the city, and the five chairmen of the standing committees, every department in the city. The way I see it, we have six months to come up with a plan for 2012 before we go into contract negotiations in, uh, by the 1st of June, end of May 1st of June. But we need to look at every department. We need to bring the department heads in uh, to be part of the long-term plan in what direction we're going to head. And we have to prioritize what we're all about. You know, what are we, what are we going to, uh, what, are, uh, what, what services are we going to provide? What services are most important to us? What services are not important, not that important to us? So that needs to be, uh, needs to be looked at. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, I can say that, you know, structurally our deficit is probably a million plus in the hole for next year, but it's a heck of a lot better than the state. So, Alderman Moore. Thank you, Mayor. If I could just follow up. <clears throat> I appreciate very much the work that Alderman Hammond has done, that you've done, Mayor, and Mr. Amodio has done on this budget, but I've got a, I've got a real difficult time supporting this when we're going to be kicking over a million dollars down 
you know, down the road for next year. Uh, uh, I, I think we just have to make the dif difficult decisions for 2011. Uh, and uh, I just can't see starting out the next budget for 2012 already a million dollars in the hole when there are so many uncertainties. You know, we, we can see what the, uh, what the uh, make, uh, extending our hand to our labor partners, you can see what that's gotten us. The, uh, thank God the DPW department, uh, DP, DPW union stand, uh, uh, made some concessions and we got a, what I consider a very token uh, concessions from the fire department. But other than that, we've got nothing. And uh, I just think it's wishful thinking that uh, with going in with a million dollar uh, hole for 2012, to think that we're gonna solve the problems by trying to get union concessions, uh, I just think it's wishful thinking based on what, they've, what, our, what our labor partners have done in the recent past. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. We have to remember that in uh, uh, 2010 going into 2011, uh, we have no contracts up, up in, 20, in going into 2011. All of, we had contracts, we had agreements through 2011 to 2012. Uh, the concessions that we did get were done outside of the contracts. We didn't reopen the contracts. We did some, some addendums to the contracts. Uh, in 2012, all seven of our labor contracts are up, uh, which we will begin discussing, discussing in the summer of 2011. They are all open contracts. So I would hope that we would have a much more thorough discussion in the summer of 2011 than we did this time around. President Kittleson. Oh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, wondering, Jim, the contingency, can you just, 100,000 we took out of contingency? To, Correct. Do we, ha do we know how much we have left there? All, all we do is each year we budget a contingency. You just budget for a contingency. And if we so use it, uh, we, we use it for good reasons. If, uh, if we don't, it goes back into the general fund. Okay. And then the motor vehicle fund. reserve. And that's not, okay. And the motor vehicle fund? Correct. We took um, 125,000. I was trying to find. Do we know how much we have left there? Um, we probably have about two million dollars in the two to two and a half million dollars of what I would call um, replacement for vehicles and trucks. Okay, two million. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thank you, President Kittleson. Alderman Bowers. Yes, thank you. Now, Mr. Manuel, that's the uh, time we had the, I discussed with you the contracted services and the insurance deductibles. Yes, sir. The $400,000, now that's a deductible for general liability? I'll explain it. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, contracted services first. Uh, All contracted right. services are for legal fees. Uh, from time to time, uh, our city council engages outside council to help support um, our, any liability the city has. Uh, currently, our legal fees uh, to date in 2010, uh, we had a $40,000 budget and we're at $68,000 to date. Uh, we'll probably spend some more through this year and we have some ongoing costs into next year. Uh, from an insurance deductible standpoint, that is a deductible that we have on our, on our vehicles. Yep. Uh, we have $100,000 per occurrence and our max aggregate liability is $400,000 and that's what we budget okay. uh, for the city. We also have claims potentially charged to departments as revenue in this. We don't budget tax dollars for this. Uh, where the expenses normally get incurred are the general fund, the sewage fund, and the motor vehicle fund. Those are the three funds that own vehicles and use vehicles. So they have the potential for the liability loss. If we do have liability losses, we charge those individual funds reserve balances for the expenses incurred. So how much did we use up last year of the 400,000? I think, Nancy, how much was it? 134. 134? Correct. So couldn't we use that money that was left over in this year's budget? There like isn't that? money left over. It comes out of reserve balances in those funds. It's not money that's budgeted vis-a-vis -vis taxes. So that's been put back into the what, general fund? It's in the general fund, and if we need it, we take it out All right, to so offset the expenses that were incurred. Okay, so that's been put back in for this year. Well, nothing's been put back in. We, we only used, we only took out of the general fund, the sewage fund and the motor vehicle fund, $134,000 okay. last year to fund deductibles. Sure. Okay. Okay. 
this year, we, if we don't have any accidents in 2011, yeah. we won't take anything out of any funds. If we do have accidents, we'll take money out of those funds reserves that the accidents happened in. So they're out of fund reserve balances. They're not out of budget dollars, if you will. That's the way it's historically been budgeted. Uh, uh. So there's not $400,000 of money that we have that have been set aside through tax payments for 2011 that if we don't use, we could fund something else. That we could fund something else? Could not. Could not. Could not. It has to be used strictly for <clears throat> insurance. Correct. It just and it comes out of. From year to year. Well, it comes out of fund reserve balances, not out of the current year taxes. That's the difference. Okay. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. Vice President Renflesh. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I agree and I disagree with the comments regarding the million dollars uh, being kicked on down the road from Alderman Bourne. Um, as we discussed, you know, um, budgets have sense to have t sense to be tended to be on an annual basis, not a long range plan. And we had discussed with uh, strategic fiscal starting that long range plan immediately in January. Uh, so I can say that uh, while we're looking at kicking a million dollars down the road, um, that process and plan that since 2003 when I was first elected has always been a year by year basis. We're, we're going to look at a long term plan, and I appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, but the other thing is, when you really look back at what we're adding back in, that adds a million dollars, uh, if you will, down the road, and the vast majority of it is police. Um, and if we decide, we can, we, can, we can decide not to do that. We can decide to stick with the original budget, but what's the impact on the police? Uh, you know, are we protecting our citizens? Are we meeting their particular needs? So that when they pay taxes, they want particular ser uh, services for. Um, and uh, public works. And we all agree public works has taken the hit and the biggest hit in the last few years of that. Um, um, you know, are, are there creative ways to look at down the road? Yes, but they're, they're long-term solutions. They're not solutions that we can come up with uh, immediately um, to they're, do. They're, I not, mean, they're not solutions that will settle here in the next two days. No, uh, correct. Uh, and, and the solutions that, that would be strictly as originally budgeted layoffs. You know, so it would be cops and be more public works, be layoffs. Um, and... Um, there's a decision to make, and it's not an easy decision. We can stick with the original proposed budget, um, do the layoffs, pat ourselves on the back for balancing a budget that doesn't include any uh, uh, taxes uh, increases, um, and starts uh, <coughs> perhaps a long-term plan of uh, living within our means. Um, but there's some very real consequences of that plan, and I don't think I can pat myself on the back for having that many cops not on the street. So uh, I'm looking at this right now, and. Uh, um, my support is going to, uh, at this point, is for uh, this amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Rinfleisch. I think there's one thing we have to remember um, as the political leaders of this city. We're in the service business. That's what we do. We don't, we don't manufacture a product. Uh, we don't sell anything. We're in the service business. We provide service to our citizens. And every time that we cut. Um, you can look at it as bodies or people, personnel, but along with that comes lesser services. And, uh, you know, we're in the service business. Unfortunately, we, uh, um, we don't manufacture a product that we can go out and sell more of it to increase our revenues. Uh, the, our, our funding source is the, is the tax levy. And every time that we Every time that we reduce personnel, we're reducing services, and we have to look at what our priorities are. You know, with all respect to, and the library issue is a separate issue from what we're discussing here. This is the general fund budget. But I can recall moving here uh, 36 years ago in 1974 from Chicago when I was a kid. And my uh, father came home, it was after the uh, Arab oil embargo, he was working for Standard Oil Company, and he said we're moving to Sheboygan, Wisconsin. And, uh, and we first broke out a map to figure out where the heck Sheboygan, Wisconsin was. And once we figured that out, he said it's about 50,000 people and it's very safe. That was the first words out of his mouth. That was the decision that he sold us kids on when we were kids to move here, that it was very safe. And we have to remember that we're in the service business. Um, 
that was the selling point that brought us to Sheboygan. So. Alderperson Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I want to agree with Alderman Rindfleisch and with you. Hard decisions don't always and shouldn't always mean cutting services to the taxpayers because the taxpayers pay every year and it's our job to provide those services no matter what hard decisions we have to make. Hard decisions should also mean providing the services to the taxpayers. Thank you, Alderperson Montemayor. Vice President Rinfleisch, you just spoke, right? A second question. Please. Um, on the, the plan as presented in Committee of the Whole and as uh, we made, made the amendments for, uh, but keeping the uh, tax rate the same, um, we're actually looking at a levy increase of 200000 is that correct? Correct. Right. Okay. What are our, our state mandated caps on the levy increase, do we know? Uh, we have uh, $2.6 million available. $2.6 million. Okay. So we have a possibility of doing the 200000 without too much difficulty and just we're still maintaining the same levy rate. I'm going to pay the same on my house. Theory. Right at the at the same, the same we're, we're at the rate. same tax rate, right. tax. which My means value hasn't gone up, so. provided that your value hasn't moved on your <laughs> right. home, you it will hasn't. be paying the exact same, <laughs> yeah. the exact same dollar amount, provided that your your home has not moved on assessment, the exact same dollar amount for the city portion city of portion. your tax right. bill, in the, in this January as you did last January. According to the plan, and that's the point that I wanted to bring up was. Uh, um, I had heard some comments about, well, we're raising taxes, raising taxes, and, and to a good degree, the levy is going to increase by 200000 at this point in time. The way I look at it, though, is my, I know my home assist is, has not increased like it used to be in 10 years ago. Um, you know, every year there was substantial increases, it seemed, um, that I'm looking at for this plan to save, for me, the, the police officers on the street, um, for the city portion, I'm not increasing. I know I'm going to increase on, on LTC. I know I'm going to increase on the county. I know I'm going to have to pay more on the uh, um, school board as well. But it looks like this plan uh, you know, keeps my top priority at this point in time in line without increasing my, my bottom line. So I want to point that out. Thank you. That's correct. Alderman Sampson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm gonna, you guys are just going to love me on, on this <laughs> one. I've got I to make sure the numbers add up in my head if I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to vote for something. Now, now for you caught me at a bad moment. I do not have my calculator with me either. <laughs> I don't either. I'm horrible, horrible. It's all over the paper. Um, just so I have this clear, for the public works folks, the initial proposed cuts in the $1.7 million was $541,000. We were going to have to look for somewhere to come up with the $541,000. They came back to us with $434,000. They came back to us. So we don't have to look for that anymore. They came to us with that. Correct. So we're short now. We're, we, now we need to look for $107,000. Well, the $107,000, there was $40,000 in tipping fees that we don't need for 2011. That's in the 107. There's $25,000 of reduced salt purchases because we believe, unless we have a severe winter, we have enough ice on hand. So Less that's salt. assault. I'm sorry, not ice. <laughs> ice. We'll have plenty of ice. A <laughs> lot of ice on the way, though. We uh, city buildings, uh, building improvements uh, were one-time savings for another twenty thousand dollars in that. Uh, streets and alleys. There was construction materials, a ten thousand one-time savings. Landscaping supplies, a one-time savings of ten thousand dollars. So all of those. Hundred, that hundred and seven thousand dollars was non-people related savings. Um, Public Works Director uh, Bill Bittner would like to say a word also. Um, I think we're, we're kind of confused holes in the budget. The mayor submitted a recommended budget which had that four hundred and 50 some thousand in it already. In other words, those cuts didn't have to be looked for. They were made, but they had significant consequences. The union negotiations at the union was very willing to come back and give up their raises, which is, I, I think they need to be commended, allows us to actually put money back in. Mm -hmm. Am I make, okay, the only thing that I would differ with is we were laying off a number of positions uh, 
giving positions under the union agreement is not exactly a, a concession from the union. It was, it's just accepting the cuts that are already in the budget. But that wasn't a hole to find if you simply follow the cuts that were in the mayor's executive budget, we would have to make a bunch of cuts. This was just alternative to those cuts and end up balancing in another way and end up using the concessions to, to restore some of the cuts we have to make. Is that? Sure, no, no, yeah. I, I, under, yeah. I understand that, but if, if, if those are, if, if those are, we're not looking for the four hundred thirty-four thousand dollars anymore. This it's been. We've we've found the four hundred thirty-four thousand dollars. So we're short, is, so to speak, in deficit wise. No, because if, if we look here, uh, uh, Alderman Sampson, if we have the uh, original proposed reductions of a million seven, if you look at, uh, um, Jim, do you want to go through these numbers one more time? The yeah. salt and are you, you stuck on the on the hundred and seven? Are, are you talking just the public works budget? Right, because we, I, I can add all the other ones, but it's just I'm trying to. I don't. I don't get uh, one. We start with 1.7 million that were that were in a hole, and we have revised deductions of 516 thousand in the middle column, and then we have a million eighteen thousand for the additions. And you go through and you find all these nice numbers in red here, match the outside column, but we're still the 1.7 minus 516 thousand does not equal 1 million eighteen. No, that's the COPS grant that wasn't in there. Still doesn't equal that. If you add the, the COPS grant in there, if you subtract the 516,000 from 1 1.7, it doesn't, it doesn't add up. The, the million, the million 18 is, 1 the, million. Is, the, is the total of the additions column. Right. You have revised deductions of 516,000. Punch in a calculator. Okay. I, think, oh, I, have a calculator. I think there may be a little rounding error there. Hmm? I think there may be a little well, I, I, I know 1.7 million minus 500,000 is not 1.0. 516,000? Right. 1. 1710 right. minus 516,000 is almost, like, oh, almost 1.2 million. 1.184? 1.194. Not 1.018. Yeah. Am I missing something? Eleven ninety four, right? Would be one, 1. point seven million minus the five hundred sixteen thousand. And then no. we have to take the cops grant and add that in. To the add that into where? Into the one million oh eighteen. Because that's just in the proposed cuts, but we're not cutting it. We're gonna, if we keep the six patrolmen, we're gonna keep the cops grant. So that would be in the budget, but that goes. That's in, coming back. Yeah, it goes in in revenue and expense. So that's a wash to the budget, for the grant. Perhaps I can take a stab at this. Uh, I think the COPS grant, um, for a lack of a better place to put it, was put into the proposed reductions. Uh, reality is, is probably shouldn't have been there in the first place. Because what the COPS grant is was federal funds that were coming to us by maintaining our uh, staffing. Um, so it, the, it's not money that's coming out of the taxpayer, our local taxpayers' funds. It's being funded to us. Uh, the reason why it's in reduction column is probably because if we don't find ways to um, on the line above, find at least the 213000 that we added back in, we would have to forego that COPS grant, which is why it's under reduction, uh, because a reduction under a line item that the police had used within their budget, but it's not a line item that's coming from the taxpayers. So it's not being added back in the additions, but even though it should be, it should, it should, the line shouldn't even be there at all, period. What it is then, uh, so that if you took out the 1.7 million, subtract out the COPS grant, um, to whatever number that equals to, then subtract the 516,000 reduction, you get the 1.1, 1 1.18 1 million. Right. But uh, the confusion is because we're looking at, um, uh, it's not a reduction from uh, what we're looking at taxing, uh, coming out of the, the, the local tax levy, uh, that reduction is what's coming out of 
the budget, and what was budgeted for was based off 246,000 coming from a federal grant. We would not get that federal grant if we don't find at least 213 or the, to keep the seven patrol three new hires. We lose that grant. Mm -hmm. But that grant isn't being taken out of then the, the local taxpayers. So it, that, that line item is actually two, two different things. It's, got, it's a reduction out of, the, out of the budget for the police department, but it's not a reduction out of, of or an increase if we don't do it out of the uh, tax levy. So take that out and then do the math and then it should work out. <clears throat> yeah, fourteen sixty four. If we, you know, the cops grant actually should just probably not even be on here because it's not. Yeah, the effective. difference. The difference is if you take that one million seven ten, mm -hmm. you back out the cops grant to two forty six, you back out the thirty thousand dollar grant uh, for the police that we found last week. It's fourteen thirty four. And if you take five sixteen from that, you get nine. 18 into the 918, you add the 100,000 for SC, EDC, mm -hmm. and, you, and you balance. Okay. okay. Thank you. I'm sorry for that confusion. No. No. Yeah, so, the, so what we have here is the $30,000 on the other grant that's not in here. Correct. Right. Uh, we, just take, we just take out the COPS grant totally. Right, Jim? Yes. And that way it doesn't, it doesn't confuse the sheet, right. even though we are getting the three patrol officers through the federal funding. <laughs> Alderman Sampson, does that make sense now? We're good. Yep, thank you. We good? Thank you. Anybody else have any questions on the math? All right, we're good there. Okay, further discussion? Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Um, I guess I'd just like to make a... a call it an editorial comment, if you will. Um, you might be wondering why I wasn't chiming in on the numbers crunching. You know, we spent a, quite a fair amount of time vetting the spreadsheet and the numbers, and I understand it may be a tad bit confusing, but trust me, the numbers are correct um, on this. But I look at it, we really have four alternatives as a council to decide tonight, or propose tonight, decide on Wednesday. Um, we can increase the levy, actually five alternatives, if you will, increase the levy, decrease reserves, lay off, combination of all those, or take a look at this plan that was put together with a lot of forethought, and um, it doesn't do any of those. It doesn't increase the levy, um, it doesn't increase layoffs, and it doesn't take money out of the general fund. Yes, is it, is it perfect? Does it bring all of our union brethren in and beat them over the head and say you should give up more of your stuff under a uh, contract negotiated in good faith? No, but it keeps the police on the streets, it keeps the firefighters on the streets, and it keeps the DPW folks cleaning our parks and doing the things necessary. So again, I, uh, I didn't chime in on the whole calculation debate because I know the numbers are correct. Um, what we have to decide is, you know, do we want to accept this or what the alternatives are, not the math of it. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Jim, would you like to comment? Yeah, I'd just like to make one other comment. Uh, in looking back, uh, I went back as far as 2002. It appears that 2010, for the first time in the city in the last 10 years, it's had a balanced budget. And by that I mean revenue equaled expense. If you go back to 2009, the budget approved, revenue was less than expense by $1.8 million. If you go back to 2008, Revenue was less than expense approved budget by $2 million. If you go back to 2007, revenue was less than expense by $4.5 million. 2006, revenue less than expense, $2.6 million. 2005, revenue less than expense by $1.5 million. So this problem has been here for a long time. And we've chosen to act differently. The upside is, and we can call it luck or good management, that we've underspent the budget that's been presented and or had some addif additional revenue we didn't count on to counteract the proposed deficits in these budgets. And if you take from 2005 to 2009, if there wasn't for some additional revenue and or good budget management by the city managers, the general fund balance would be zero. 
because that would add up to a negative $12 million over those five years in fund reserve balances. And at the end of 2009, we had a reserve balance of $11 million. So that's what we face. Going into 2011, this is again a balanced budget. Yes, it has some carry forward problems, but not to the degrees that we've seen them in the past. And I believe they're manageable, especially with negotiations coming up for 2012. Thanks, Jim. Yeah. Alderman Reisler. I guess I'm going to defer uh, until we get a little bit more resolved regarding discussing the library and some of my options and plans. So I'll wait till we get a little more. Thank you. Alderman Bowers. Yes, thank you. Uh, so in other words, what you're saying is um, the budget for the last five years, uh, the expenditures have come in under the revenue, no. or they've come over the revenue. Revenues were less than expenditures. Okay. The budget was overspent for the budget was overspent up until 2010, 2010. Okay. Our, is that our the budget submitted to the state? Balanced. Because I think there's a state law, so you must have a uh, balanced budget. So is there ways around that, or is that another? These are the budgets that were submitted. Submitted to the state. Correct. Hey, am I okay. correct, Nancy? Is Nancy there? <laughs> <laughs> Nancy. Balance budgets what were we balance submitted, it with? but uh, balance we, well, we balanced it with but reserves. But they didn't balance. Reserves, yeah. We balanced it with reserves. Okay. So my next question is, where is the Mead Public Library figure in this budget? Uh, the Mead Public Library, Alderman separate Bowers, fund. is a separate fund, separate. which we're going right. to be discussing after we complete this document. All right. The, the Mead Public Library is not in the general fund. It's right. a separate fund. All right. This is the general fund we're discussing right now. Alderman Sampson, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I, I apologize for, for my own confusion on the numbers. It was certainly Alderman Hammond. It was certainly not to question the numbers. They make sense in your mind. And I'm sure you, you the mayor, and, and Mr. Modio did a lot of work and a lot of hours on coming up with those. So it certainly wasn't questioning the numbers. It was just to make sense the numbers in my brain, just like they're making sense in, in yours. So I wasn't necessarily questioning the numbers, whether they were working. I just had to clear them up in, in my head. So I certainly appreciate the time that you folks put behind putting that together it's not an easy thing so I, I didn't want to uh, I just wanted to clear up in, in my own in my own brain so thank you spreadsheet was confusing and that's my bad yeah. thanks Alderman Sampson because for a while you had me confused too so <laughs> now we're about do that stick around thanks. <laughs> okay uh, I have no lights lit up here any uh, further discussion on this portion of the budget Um, you have an amendment on the floor right now. Yeah, we do have an amendment on the floor to the general fund budget, which is the document before you. We have a motion and a second to accept that amendment. Uh, we can amend the budget, budget this evening. However, we cannot take the final vote on the budget until Wednesday. So is there any further discussion? Uh, the the Motion on the floor is to adopt the general fund budget with these amendments. Alderman Hammond. Hannah. Alderman Hannah? <laughs> yeah. Consigulary. Just to make those amendments to the budget, not oh, to Oh, to make these amendments to the budget, but not to adopt the budget until Wednesday. Okay. Thank you, Steve. That's why you're the attorney. Just, a, just a, a clarification point. The levy is going up 200000 Yes, the uh, tax that rate require, remains the same. two-thirds? Approval by the council or just a simple majority and the attorney saying no, it's just a simple majority Right, uh, it's just a simple majority on the actual budget a budget alteration If you were changing the approved budget that requires a two-thirds vote Thank you to establish the budget or make amendments to the proposed budget. It's just a majority. Thank you It's a majority of the entire council which would be nine members. It is not the majority of present Alderman Reisler? Again, one uh, thing for clarification. We're going to have the option of sleeping on this for 48 hours and the ability to amend on Wednesday as well, correct? Sure, as long as you don't have a turkey to cook. Right, Not exactly. a problem. <laughs> Thanks. Mm -hmm. No, we can be here all night Wednesday. That's, that's why we make the big bucks. <laughs> 
Alderman Powers? Yes, thank you. So the amendment is this? Yes. That was yes. presented to us. Uh, so this is the amendment to the original budget. To the original proposed executive budget, correct. All right. And that would be uh, just to the general number 1533 or 1532? 33. Or not either one. I don't know. Neither one. Uh, that would be the. Uh, so do you have uh, it would be res. I believe it would be res 129, Alderman Bowers. Yeah, it's uh, B 1532. 32. Yes. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Is there any further discussion? If there is none, uh, the vote is on just to President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. Just to clarify now, if we were voting to send <coughs> this particular document, we're amending to send that to forward for Wednesday nights. We will send the budget forward to <coughs> Wednesday, to Wednesday for revised with this document. Revised. Are we uh, at that time? Can we amend? Or can we talk further here? At that point, this can be amended again if somebody would like, or it or can, can be. Or can we talk further this evening about? Uh, we can. We can. We can. We can speak all night about this if you'd like. The floor is still open. We haven't voted on it yet. We haven't voted, so that means we can talk about the line. What? Uh, uh, that that would be a separate. Fund. separate that that is a separate, separate fund for discussion. Okay. Thank you. Yes. This this uh, this particular document does not affect the library one way or the other. Just to clarify also, if any of the other aldermen have proposed changes to the budget, this is one proposed change to the budget. Doesn't mean other aldermen can't present other changes, whether this proposed amendment passes or doesn't pass. So uh, everything's open at this point. Thank you, President Kittleson. Alderman Bowers, did you have something else? Yes, thank you. Uh, could you? Clarify that, uh, Attorney McLean. You said that they, it took, uh, it's going to take 12 to vote for what, an amendment or a simple majority? I guess I was confused on that. The, the budget, to adopt the budget, requires a majority of the members elect of the council. That's the members elect are 16, so it requires a majority of 16, which is nine. Uh, okay. Uh, once the budget is adopted, uh, to amend or to change the existing approved budget requires a, a public notice in the paper and a two-thirds vote of the council to change the budget after it's adopted. All right. So if you wanted to change the 2010 budget as it was passed last yeah. November, right. that requires a two-thirds vote. All right. But to adopt the present budget right. is just a majority of the members elect of the council. Okay, so that would uh, also uh, be if the mayor vetoes some of the, does he need the two th or 12 member vote to override the veto or? Council would need a two thirds vote to override any mayoral veto, yes. All right, thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. Is there any uh, further discussion on this portion of the budget. So we are uh, voting to um, revise the present budget with these figures and to bring that to a final vote or more amendments on Wednesday. Is everybody clear on that? An I vote would be to vote for amendment. the budget with these amendments. A no vote would not. Correct, Sue? I vote just to vote it's for the It's just amendment. voting for the amendment. Just voting just the for the amendment. amendment, yes. We're not voting for the final budget. Right, for the amendments for the amendment. to the budget. So right now there's just one amendment, which is this sheet right here. Okay. Okay. Roll call, please. Hammond. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heideman. Aye. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Raisler. Aye. Samson. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Warren? No. And Bowers? No. 11 ayes, 2 noes on the amendment. Motion carries to be continued Wednesday. Okay. Um, now we are uh, looking at uh, the other resolution, correct, on budget appropriations for the city of Sheboygan funds. 
That is correct. Uh, so resolution number 130-10-11 by Alder Persons Hammond, Bulk, Boren, Rinfleisch, and Raisler ordering the 2011 budget appropriations for City of Sheboygan funds. We need a motion to put that upon its passage and a second for discussion. I, I, we made a motion for I both think documents. We made a both. Oh, yeah, we did. We did. Yeah, okay. Just, so this open. is just for it's under open. under discussion. Mm -hmm. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I handed out a document to each of the aldermen um, regarding the Mead Public Library. I think we had uh, very uh, large support um, from your constituents and mine regarding the public library this evening and emphasizing the uh, need to keep the funding for the library uh, or an attempt to come up with the funding for the library. I guess I can't overstate the, uh, the importance of the library and, and all those people who have spoke this evening. Uh, I think we owe it to uh, the citizens and our constituents to try to uh, come up uh, with the funding uh, to support the library. I gave you six funding options um, regarding this um, and quickly just going over them. Uh, the first funding option is to do nothing and uh, leave it at the $300,000 reduction. And then there's various funding options uh, including uh, some furlough days and some uh, reduction in the uh, funding for new items as well as uh, number six, which would be um, to uh, provide a zero uh, percent, or excuse me, a $2,845 increase to the 2010 budget, which would also meet the uh, maintenance of effort. Uh, on the bottom of the uh, form is also the location of some possible funding. Um, they start with the, uh, the general fund um, or the um, possibility of some tax uh, increase uh, to go with 12 cents uh, per $100,000 or $12 per uh, an average home, which would be a $100,000 um, home. And then there's also another one on the bottom. If we choose to go with a lesser um, amount, um, it would actually be down to $0.04 cents per 1000 and $4 per 100000 uh, home. Obviously, the 12 and $4 um, by are no means uh, anything that are uh, extensive as far as the uh, tax increase. I guess what I'm looking for is before I make a motion, I'm looking for some discussion as to um, what might be favorable um, or what might not be favorable as far as trying to uh, come up with a document to help uh, the library. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Raisler. Under further discussion, President Kittleson. Oh, no. I, no? Thank you, Mayor. Alderman Sampson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Going back to the... No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, just... <laughs> Do you, do you understand that? Do you understand that nine aldermen out of sixteen majority? <laughs> give, me another, give me another twenty-four hours. I'll come right back at you with this one. Um, <laughs> any of these, uh, these uh, alderman Raisler, just uh, some of these options here to reduce service hours uh, by five furlough days. Any of these options were those discussed with anybody in, in, in that, that's going to be affected by that, or is that something that we just decide here and that's just the way it is? Uh, I've been in. Uh, Continuous discussions with the members of the library and the board, and these these are acceptable options that they said we'll we'll go along with. Um, probably, other than number one, um, it would be something that they would be probably willing to work with and um, try to make do with. I guess we can actually call this she, uh, Sharon's department head, I believe, right? right? Yes. Call it up if you would like to. I don't want to speak out of school, Sharon. Library Director Sharon Winkle. I don't want to speak out of school, so. Yes, please. Please. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Um, yes, we have um, had, I have had a conversation as a library director with Alderman Riesler. Uh, nationally, anything um, that involves the library at this major level needs discussion with the library board and action by the library board. But the options that you see in front of you are options that were embedded, if you will, in earlier budgets that were submitted for discussion. Uh, when we first began discussion with uh, Mayor Ryan and Finance Director Amodio, uh, one of the options we had submitted was a $200,000 expenditure reduction. And so that's, that's one of the things you see listed there. And then you see variations that 
reduce the decrease to the funding proposed for 2011 uh, need to have funding added, of course, in order to do that. And as you move along that continuum, the service reductions that the public would experience decrease until we get to the point where um, the council in that option that is um, under discussion would fund the Mead Public Library at the maintenance of effort level for 2011, which would require uh, an increase of 302845 from the executive budget recommended funding level for 2011. Thank you, Sharon. Mm -hmm. If you can stay up here for, we may have some questions. Okay. Alderman Bourne. No, no questions of Sharon. Thank you, Sharon. Alderman Bourne. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I would like the uh, police chief, the fire chief, and the DPW director to come up and talk about uh, when they were going over their budgets for 2011, whether they considered uh, possibly reducing their administrative staffs. And my thinking is, after listening to them, if it's possible, if we could get an administrative position out of the fire department, the police department, and DPW, just rough calculations, each one of those people with salary and benefits would be about $100,000. There's our funding for the library. So I would like to have the three department heads tell us if they consider doing any reductions from their administrative staffs, if they can, if they can't, and why or why not. Thank you. Chief Domagalski from the Police Department, Chief Herman from the Fire Department. In putting together the budget to get to the number that I got to, I eliminated one and a half administrative positions. Uh, we had eliminated one staff position in uh, this year, one in 2006. Um, as I continue to look at reorganizing, um, it would cause me to move a staff person down into a union uh, position. Um, I am looking at uh, quite a substantial change in the hours of our staff people um, for more flexibility. Um, that could possibly entail um, reorganizing the entire staff. Chief, when would that, would that be for 2011, or are you looking at 2012? Um, the hour um, changes would be in 11. Um, we also have a open fire inspector position, which is a union position at this time. Um, I am considering incorporating that as a part of staff positions. Wait a minute, Chief, wait a minute. Bill. The uh, executive budget that the council received including the concluded an elimination of one administrative position uh, it required us to actually consolidate our operations simply to have coverage uh, uh, because of the, those administrative things. It does not include any elimination of supervisory positions, but in the last three years we've eliminated over 30 positions in the department. I would suggest that most that that supervisory has been disproportionately eliminated, such as when I came here, uh, the parks was supervised by three supervisors. It's now has one supervisor. So we've, we've done a lot in terms of reducing, and I don't believe we can reduce any more. Now the understanding we are losing four positions in, the, in, in public works maintenance again. Uh, with the union's uh, concessions, just which four those are it now changes a little bit from the proposed budget because we had some of those dollars to come back and, and reinstate. Thank you. Now back in, I was looking at the historically public works back in the uh, mid 1980s, we had I think 215 people in our Department of Public Works. Uh, now we're almost cracking uh, down below 100. So we've definitely uh, done some staff reductions over time. Chief. Alderman uh, Bourne, we, I also reduced three lieutenant positions for 2011. Yeah. Uh, next we have Alderman Hanna, Alderman Bowers, please. No, Alderman Hanna is next. My question actually was for Sharon. 
Okay. Um, yeah. Alderman Bowers, you can jump out of order here, please. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. You had a question for the chief, I take it? Yes. Thank you. Uh, chief, you said that the, the, these staff reductions were 2011. Do you have any amount of money that would be saved or different? different uh, that, that was figured into the budget already? Oh, it's been figured in already. So that's been figured in, so you don't see any further reductions in 2011? Not as was <coughs> submitted in the budget, no. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. Thank you, Chief. Do we have any other questions for the three department heads that were up here? Alderman Rinfleisch? Kind we're of. going to kind of jump out of order here a little bit if so we can um, clear these guys off the table. Uh, the and police chief especially came up and went. Um, the, um, um, the comment I have on, on, on that is even with the amendment, uh, the police is still being cut from their budget from last year, $198,000. They're not getting funded their full request, even with this amendment. Uh, there's still going to be pain in there, and that's still going to be, I'm sure it's going to be either copy. You have three, three less officers than were on the TO. And that year. might be administrative, that might be officers. I leave that to the, to the, the department has to do. So uh, I guess in comments, I've been born. Any further reductions to that department, if there's a position that, that can be found to be expendable or something, that has to go back and be uh, on our general fund uh, budget. Uh, and meet, make amendments that way. Um, because the, the meat library isn't within the general fund, uh, it's on its own fund, it comes out of the general tax levy, however. Um, so to move money from the police department to the library, pitting books versus cops, uh, and two different funds together, I think is inappropriate. I think we're looking at uh, you know, voting on one thing. If we support the police department at that, that particular level, then support it. If you disagree with that level of support, then don't support the budget. But keep the library a separate issue. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. We're in flesh. Is there any other questions for the three department heads? Uh, Alderman Sampson, please go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm sorry, Chief and, and Police Chief Domogowski. I guess the, my main thing is, are there any overlapping? I understand. I, I have all the respect for the fire department and, and police, and, and I certainly respect the job that they do, but I understand that there's also times where people get promoted, 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 or people get shifted around to where they start overlapping a lot of different positions and overseeing things. We heard from DPW that there were three, three folks supervising the parks, but now they're down to one. Is there any extra spot position that, that might be overlapping that you can see? That was, that's one. Uh, the next, and, and Chief, you said you have hourly change to staff and an open inspection position that you still have. That hasn't been figured into any of these, these numbers yet, so that's still a possibility. Or has that already been figured into the numbers? That all those numbers are in the budget as proposed. So, okay, for next so the year. hourly change to the staff and the one it, open position. That's yeah, the hour, hourly changes to the staff are not figured in the budget, and there's not actually a savings to that. That's just a functional just change for to make okay. us operate better. Okay, so then I guess the only thing I had left then was that is there any overlapping uh, positions that we might be able to uh, to move around to free up. A little excess, a little extra money in there. I know, I know everything's tight, but if there's just any extra positions that we might be able to uh, eliminate that are overlapping, maybe we can look at something like that. Yep. I don't have that in my department. Ald Alderman Sampson, if I can uh, answer your question somewhat there, uh, as, as part of our, our general fund, as part of this budget, which we know this budget is not the long-term answer, uh, we, we fully intend to uh, um, December 1st activate the uh, strategic Fiscal Planning Committee to look at just at those issues and to come up with a plan, uh, whatever we can uh, institute, initiate in 2011, we will. And uh, whatever we can get to that can help us out in contract negotiations in 2011 for 2012, it's all part of that plan uh, to go here right now and try to, after we have uh, a preliminary budget at least, uh, to try to in two days figure out who we can eliminate there uh, when we have given these departments goals of here's your target that you need to hit I don't think is going to be productive at this point however I do think that if we through the strategic fiscal planning committee and getting involved in the in detail with department heads uh, getting input without micromanagement on our point and coming up with mutual solutions I think we can can make a lot of progress 
Alderman Hanna, did you have a question for? Just for Sharon. Director Winkle, please. <clears throat> Thank you, Director. I think it was Kathy Norman that said, now's the, now's the time to focus on creative solutions when she was up there speaking tonight. A um, couple things I need clarified. It's my understanding, and I need you to, to confirm or, or tell me I'm, I'm wrong. My understanding is that in all likelihood, if we miss the maintenance of effort, we would not be removed from Eastern Shores. That's my first question. Do you, will we be removed from Eastern Shores in 2011? The library budget that is based on the $300,000 reduction makes the assumption, takes the risk, if you will, that there may be penalties in 2011, but that expulsion would not take place until 2012 if the maintenance of effort funding level is not met. Okay. A second question is, I know at the fiscal year end for the city, you had undesignated funds north of 600,000 in reserves, and I think it's down to 400,000 now. Mm -hmm. um, are you allowed to voluntarily give those back to the city? I don't have the answer to that question. I mean, it's likely that the library board, since it has a lot of power regarding the finances of the library, could make that determination. Um, would they then count for maintenance of effort? Uh, that's the crux of the question. I Wonderful. think that you're asking uh, the Attorney General's office to re-examine. I mean, we have the statute about how you calculate MOE. We have um, a letter to the city of Washburn from 2006 that, that clarifies that prior year funds um, aren't included in the maintenance of effort calculation. So let's say the library board did do that. Uh, likely that wouldn't satisfy the maintenance of effort requirement. So it's, that's really a separate yeah, I just, question. I just want to know, but it's mm -hmm. certainly within your purview. Uh, if, if the library board saw fit, they could return undesignated fund balances. I think they probably could. When you look at the undesignated, well, really, we don't have any undesignated fund Not balance. Now, but we you, have, did it, you did it the, at the audit time. Yeah, we have reserved funds, right. and they're all designated. Now they are. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And there's a, it's, um, a little, it's over $400,000. Uh, it's um, under 15% of the total budget of the library. And some of these things are designated for, for example, replacement of the integrated library system. So if the library and, and the city were expelled from Eastern Shores library system, that's an important source of funding to keep the library operating. Just, yeah. I'm just looking for creative solutions. I, I understand, and I really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Alderman Bowers? Yes, thank you. One more question, oh, please. If I understand this correctly, didn't, didn't we run into the same problem last year in somewhere you came up with the funds or the library board or somewhere the funds were taken out of the reserve funds? What happened last year is that in February, actually, of 2010, <coughs> the Common Council amended the 2010 budget using money, I believe, from the general fund uh, some $228,000 in order to meet the maintenance of effort requirement for 2010. Right. So it played out rather late into uh, the budget cycle, certainly, and the reporting cycle. Again, there was an amendment in February of this year mm -hmm. that allowed the city to meet that mm -hmm. funding requirement. Yeah, we contributed, and I thought the library contributed. So uh, they contributed didn't? both cash and a liability. So their c contribution was neutral. Uh, yes, in a separate action, the library board agreed to turn over to the city for mm -hmm. its own purposes to be determined by the Common Council. Um, the liability accounts 
that it had accumulated over the years for the purpose of paying vacation and sick leave liability. Those, in a way, really weren't reserves. They were for liabilities that the library board has. And in that agreement that was adopted by the council in late 2009, if I recall correctly, the liability also transferred, yes. as Alderman Hanna is saying. Okay. So the library board no longer has that liability and no longer has those funds. Okay. Um, I have talked with certain state representatives and with the new regime coming into Madison, they seem to think there might be a change in protocol as far as maintenance of effort. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, so far, if I recall correctly, the city of Milwaukee has not met the maintenance of effort. So far, what has happened to that library? Anything? That's what leads us to believe that we would have a year if maintenance of effort legislation stands as it currently is. It stands, yeah. uh, because Milwaukee Public Library and the city of Milwaukee did not meet the maintenance of effort funding requirement mm -hmm. for 2010. Mm -hmm. And there were some penalties issued by the Milwaukee County Federated Library System, not expulsion penalties uh, with the information or guidance uh, to the effect that the city and library should meet maintenance of effort mm -hmm. in 2011. And according to library director Paula Kiley, that is indeed the case that the city of Milwaukee and Milwaukee Public Library, as they're developing and adopting the budget, will meet the maintenance of effort funding requirement for 2011. I see, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Sharon, on those penalties, I believe that that was some federal, some federal grants or federal funds that they were, that were, they were not eligible for under the maintenance of effort. Yes, as well as some information technology support and consulting We don't services. receive any federal funds, correct? We are eligible to and we have, yes. But we don't have any in this budget, correct? Not for 2010. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, there might have been in 2009. I don't know if there are any in the 2010 budget. Thank you. I'd have to check. Alderman Sampson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm sorry. This, this question was actually for Alderman Hammond. Just wanted to find out the status of that letter that we were waiting for from the Attorney General, if we have any news on that. Alderman Hammond. Please. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> uh, Attorney McLean has drafted it, um, forwarded it to me. I have not had a chance to review it. I, he forwarded it to me this afternoon. Um, I have not had a chance to review it, um, but that's my plan for tomorrow morning. Um, but we have not got, it has not been submitted to the uh, AG's office yet. I would not expect a response by Wednesday. No, and uh, as a practical matter, that's not going to be the solution, uh, regardless of what the AG says as far as counting unspent funds or not counting unspent funds. It's not going to magically get us to the maintenance of effort level. Uh, it would, would help, but it wouldn't get us that there. That's understandable. Just trying to tie up a loose, loose end there. It was out there. So, thank you, Alderman Sampson. Oh. Alderman Hammond. Yeah. Yes. Um, just real quick on the maintenance of effort, um, or the um, hundred, or the reserve funds, whatever you want to call it. That would only get us about a hundred thousand dollars. So, based off of you know the calculations, again, if you read the statute, um, it would we'd still have about two hundred thousand that we'd need to make up if we. Um, need to fund that true maintenance of effort um, calculation. But uh, um, I would act, like to ask Mr. Uh, Director Amodio to maybe speak a little bit on um, one of the things that uh, Director Winkle was talking about with the um, pension funds or the uh, vacation sick pay leave. Maybe want to clarify a little bit about that. You know, what's the city's future obligations now that they've transferred over to us and all of that kind of stuff? Yeah, the the, the resolution that was passed um, transferred a liability uh, from the library for vacation and sick leave for all of its employees of $443,000. And in return, the city would fund out of the $443,000 reserved uh, that they received from the library, 228000 to meet maintenance of effort for 2010. The city still holds in the general fund the liability for $443,000.
and ultimately we'll have to make up over time as these people retire the 228,000 that was given for maintenance of effort. If that clarifies. If we can, I can clarify, I believe that uh, 430, 443,000, uh, that, that's a figure for uh, vacation and sick leave upon um, uh, uh, termination from employment with the city, correct? That's, that's the accumulated uh, that, we, that we'd have to pay out. Sharon? Yes, you are. <laughs> Those were two separate agreements. Um, so the exchange of, of funds for the liability in the liability situation um, was guided by an agreement. It made no mention of uh, the city's ability or interest in funding the library at the maintenance of effort in 2010. So um, to say that of the 443,000 transferred, 228,000 was used to meet maintenance of effort. That may have been the way the city chose to meet the obligation then when it decided to fund uh, the library at MOE funding level for 2010. But that wasn't in the agreement with the library board. And I think the library board made it clear when it was discussing the agreement for the transfer of the funds along with the liability that um, there was no expectation of MOE funding that was directly related to that agreement. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you. I guess, um, you know, this is, a, for lack of a better word, quite the pickle. Um, in order to fund maintenance of effort, Again, leaving the AG's opinion out, we need to be at $302,845. Um, the options, and by the way, I'd like to commend Alderman Riesler for putting this together. Um, you know, it's always nice when people may have an objection but come with solutions, and I, I do commend you for doing that. Um, but none of the other options meet maintenance of effort. So is the issue whether or not we meet maintenance of effort and stay in Eastern Shores Library, I think the director just answered that. We would not be kicked out of the Eastern Shores Library system in 2011 if we did not meet maintenance of effort. So the next question is, do we want to give them more funding in order to reduce the amount of service outages that they would, would entail by cutting the full 300,000? Um, so you know, I think the maintenance of effort conversation is kind of, in my opinion, off the table because we know we're not going to be cut out of out of Eastern Shores Library in 2011. Um, but the next conversation needs to be, you know, are the service cuts that are necessary, or are the service cuts proposed necessary, um, and do we want to fund any or all of those, those shortfalls? Um, so I guess that's uh, my take on it. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Alderman Bowers. Thank you. I'd just like to point out to the uh, people in the audience and also on TV, the city of Sheboygan is assessed somewhere around $55 per citizen. The towns, somewhere around $15 per person. I don't know if they're aware of this. At Ozaki County, it's under a dollar. Now, how we ever got with the city funding all this and what the formula is, I don't know. Does anybody know what the formula is or can it be changed or can we change it? Because we're bearing the brunt of this county library system. And I know the county doesn't want to take it over. I've asked them, they said, no way. Yeah, I offered it to them also, and they, yeah. didn't, they didn't. Okay. Yeah. And I said, it's free. You can have it. <laughs> but, of course, I'm speaking out of turn. But anyway, is there any way uh, this funding can be reorganized? Does anybody have an answer to that? No. First of all, let me clarify what I just said. I said that in jest. Uh, we have shared services meetings. And uh, the county, it seems, on shared services, their idea of shared services are to take over the city services. So I did offer the library as part of a shared service, and they turned me down. So that was, uh, that was all done in jest, so just so I make myself clear there. Alderman Sampson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, since, since one of those funding options it, it keeps coming up is the general fund, if we can find out, Mr. Amodio, where, where exactly are we at 
general fund wise or, or our position is for fear of reducing our uh, bond rating or, or affecting our bond rating or whatever the general fund seems to seems to come up often when it when, when it comes to trying to figure out money for this so I'd just like to know what is our position in the general fund and do we have any flexibility there with without fear of doing damage to the city Jim At the last meeting, I uh, commented on the general fund, um, the balance anyway. Um, currently, the balance um, in the general fund has about $3.8 million of undesignated reserve, reserve balances. There's a designated portion to that which um, was passed by council in 2005 that said there was $4 million needed for working capital and that would be designated as a reserve. In addition, the resolution went further on to say, in looking at the prior year's expenditures compared to that of the year before that, if there was an increase in expenditures, the same increase should be made to the fund reserve balance as a, as a designated reserve. So in looking at it from 2005, we've kept it at $4 million. And really, it should have gone up based on the increases in spending since 2005 through 2009 of roughly another half a million dollars. That would take the general fund undesignated reserve balance to 3.3 million, or roughly 27% of the total general fund reserve balance. We've been told by Ehlers and also by Moody's uh, the general fund balance undesignated reserve should be around 25% of the total. So at 27%, you know, we're right on the cusp of that. Uh, I don't know where the 2010 is going to shake out. I'm pretty nervous on revenue side, uh, not from county and city, uh, but uh, from other revenue sources that we budget. We're significantly under on uh, interest income. We had a lot of sales in for land and buildings the city owned that we haven't sold this year. Uh, expenses seem to pretty be pretty much in line. Uh, there could be close to a half a million dollar savings if I do the simple math, uh, but I'm not sure about anything. And that's through the end of October. Uh, I'm not sure if there's, there's anything hanging out there for November and December, or even if we have a bad winter. So I'm pretty nervous about the budget, plus or minus, you know, my take is it might be neutral to that. I don't see it right now detracting significantly from the general fund, but I don't see it adding to, if you will. So that leaves us roughly 2% of $3.3 .3 million that we would have. Okay. And we also have to look at uh, the, the proposed uh, 2011 general fund budget right now. And even the $100,000 we'd normally leave in contingency is figured in the budget. There's not a lot of wiggle room in this budget, if you know what I mean. If uh, you know, we get a bill midway through the year from the state the way we did a couple of years ago for WRF or something of the sort, I think, what, what did we have? Somewhere around a half million dollar bill between WRF and tipping funds that they sent us in July. Um, it doesn't give us a lot of room. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Thank you, Alderman Sampson. Alderman Hammond. Hang, hang, hang tight. Just to kind of further expand on, um, I am holding in my hand from our June meeting with the folks from Ehlers. Um, they look at four, or and those are on the Finance Committee, we're in on this meeting, they really look at four criteria to help determine our bond rating. And the number one is the undesignated general fund percentage of total operating revenue. So at 3.3 million, that's about 10%, just doing rough math on a $35 million budget. Um, our bond rating for those that uh, are interested is a double A2 from Moody's. Um, that's a fairly decent bond rating given the economic conditions and the size of our city. The median undesignated general fund percentage revenue of total operations is 17.6. We're at 14.9, that's as of this. And now, again, as Director Modio pointed out, had we been following that resolution, it would probably be lower. Let me put that into some numbers. Our bond rating goes down, and again, um, we have to go out for capital in, in multiple different areas. It could be somewhere between 25 basis points and 50 basis, or quarter of a percent to a half a percent of additional uh, interest that we have to pay on our debt, which would be far exceed the, over time, the $300,000 that we would gain by rating the general fund um, to, to fund the maintenance of effort. Um, so I thought I'd maybe just clarify that a little bit with 
how that works in kind of reality when it comes to the, the bond rating. So thank you. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Alderman Richlich, um, do you have any thanks, questions? Sir. I, he, Alderman Hammond just answered the question I was going to pose to uh, Joe Modio. Uh, but the second part I was going to ask, and, and perhaps you can speak to this as well, uh, beyond um, the dollar amount and the costs and the fact that, that whatever savings we gain by using the general fund reserves right now, for maintenance of effort, will be easily eaten up um, in a short period of time when we have to go to the capital markets. Um, that would actually cost us us as taxpayers more in the well, short term and long term, I think. Uh, but beyond that, uh, uh, is it a good idea for cities in general for, for something that should be in the tax levy and funded on a regular basis out of the tax levy to use short term expediencies like going into the uh, General Reserve Fund? Um, to, to, to tell, and uh, to what uh, Alderman Bourne had said before, saying we're just kicking the problem on down the road. Um, if we go to the general fund and find the 302845 reserves, what does our maintenance efforts become next year? Uh, and where is that funding going to come from? Um, or is it a better idea to, if we're committed to funding the library at the maintenance effort at 302845, mm -hmm. to go to the tax levy, um, you know, if that's what we decide to do, fund it that way, and then continue to fund that year by year uh, that way instead of going to the, uh, the general reserve? Is that more appropriate if that's what the council decides? I would believe that an increase in the taxes to support the library be the, the more prudent way to go rather than take from general fund reserves. The stronger our fund reserve balances are, the better off the city is in, be, in being able to capacitize all of its debt and get it at the lowest possible uh, rate that, they, that the, the market offers at the time we go out. Uh, if people feel strongly about the library, and they're willing to pay for it through a tax levy increase, and that's what we should do. Thank you, Vice President Rinflesh and Mr. Amodio. Alderman Bowers? Yes. Uh, since no one offered any information as to the formula, where would we go to get the formula for our portion of the library and the county's portion in Ozaki's County? Nancy, do you have that, or does Sharon, do you have that? Sharon? Please. I think, Alderman Bowers, that you're referring to the fact that by statute, counties pay for services provided to their residents who live in jurisdictions that don't offer public library service. Yes. Okay. So when you look at the way Mead Library is funded about, and this is for 2009, 76% uh, of the funding came from the appropriations from the Common Council, Sheboygan Common Council. And the rest came from other sources, including payments from Sheboygan County, payments from some adjacent counties other than Ozaki County and Ozaki County. Okay. Um, when you look at the usage of the library on the basis of checkouts, 74% of the checkouts were made to residents of the city of Sheboygan. So I, I, you seem to have a concern about an imbalance there in level of responsibility, but if you look at usage based on checkouts, it's not really particularly out of balance. Um, there's no formula per se, it's a statutory obligation for counties to make those payments. And right now the way it's set up in Eastern Shores Library System, Eastern Shores Library System acts as the agent for all of the member libraries when it negotiates payments from Sheboygan and Ozaki County in the form of a five-year county library plan, which by the way was just adopted this year for the next five year period by both counties. So the, the payment formulas, and maybe that's where that word comes in, or the payment calculations um, are included in that five year plan, which is a local plan. The uh, minimum per, by statute is uh, paying on 70% of the cost of circulation per a calculation that is set forth in the statutes. Does that right. help? <clears throat> yes. Thank you, Sharon. Mm -hmm. Alderman Sampson. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I would just like to caution uh, everyone in here and be very careful. Again, when we go back into the, the we start talking about taxes, raising taxes of any sort, uh, we're, we're facing this issue right now as a council, as a city. Uh, you go door to door and you're gonna meet a whole lot of people that are taxpayers uh, that we get this money from. We keep increasing, the county's increased, school board's increased, LTC keeps increasing, who knows, state, federal, taxes are going up. You may, you may talk $4 here, $12 here, it may sound like a little dollar amount, but I've met a number of people that, uh, that even the slightest increases, along with all the other increases that are coming down the road here very soon, uh, and then the, the reality of the unknown with a lot more job losses, a lot more factories, not a whole lot really coming in at this point, uh, raising taxes or the threat of it. And, and we also, right now, we have the tax levy of the 200000 that we're already dealing with in the, uh, in the general fund. So we want to go higher. I understand the library is extremely important, but I think we need to be very, very cautious when we start talking about more taxes, more taxes, more taxes, when I think we should be at a time where maybe we should do some more cuts uh, than bringing taxes involved. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Sampson. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. <clears throat> For the sake of discussion, I'm gonna make a motion to go with Alderman Raisler's uh, scenario number six, and that would be a tax levy increase of 12 cents per thousand or equivalent of $12, $12 per 100 uh, for the full $302,845 to restore the funding. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to fund the library at uh, option number six. Uh, decrease the funding reduction, in other words, the proposed reduction to zero dollars, add two thousand eight hundred and forty-five dollars um, to the twenty two thousand nine budget uh, in order to cover maintenance of effort for, or to excuse me, for the twenty to the twenty ten budget in order to cover maintenance of effort for twenty eleven, um, which would be. Twelve cent one that you're looking at. Right. Tax levy increase of twelve cents per hundred per thousand dollars, equivalent or twelve dollars for a hundred on, on a hundred thousand. We have a motion and a second on that option under discussion. Alderperson Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, thank you, Alderman Bourne, for doing that. Uh, I think this past week on Tuesday. A number of us were at the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation video that was presented. And it was inspiring. I was inspired by all that Sheboygan stands for. And part of it was the library and the lake and the John Michael Kohler Art Center and the number of movers and shakers that were in that video telling the world come to Sheboygan, bring business to Sheboygan because we have all these wonderful things to offer you when you move here and the people that you will hire and the uh, administration that you will bring here. And, and we all know that the library is part of that wonderful vision. The future is bringing more jobs here and the library is part of that. So I think this is a good idea. Thank you. Thank you, Alderperson Montemayor, Alderman Rinfleisch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, no, thanks. As the um, discussion now is, is made clear, uh, thanks to the motion, um, and I agree if, if, it's, if we're committing to funding the library, it should be in the tax levy. If we're not going to raise the tax levy, then don't fund the library. I mean, the, 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 it has to be that clear. Um, to, to try to play games uh, with the, the city budget in the long term doesn't make sense to me. Uh, so the question is, raising the tax levy or not, my concern is even with the amendment that we just recently passed on the general fund, um, police are taking a $198,000 hit, um, administration's taking a $202,000 hit, public works taking a $107,000 hit. Uh, that's still within our, you know, from the last year's, um, from the original proposed reductions, and the reductions didn't even include last year's budget, if, I, if I'm correct, right? Uh, so all those departments are taking a hit. We're still looking at, a, you know, cuts of 516000 in other departments. Um, I have a tough time, you know, I said I don't want the, 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 the debate to be between cops and books, but what are we, what are our motions doing here today? Uh, fighting the library at 100% and not fighting the cops at 100%. Um, so uh, I agree with uh, Alderman Sampson to say take a look at um, not only the will, do people want to pay a tax hike or not, 
uh, and for what services, um, but also what other actions are we taking? We're also recutting uh, that way. Um, and I don't know the answer. I'm not going to tell you or you know, recommend how to vote other people to vote that way. I'm still not entirely decide how I'm going to vote on this issue um, that way. Um, but for those that think that the 300,000 is going to close the library, they're still getting $3.17 million out of the budget. The library will still be open regardless of how we vote on it. There will be service cutbacks. Make no doubt about it. Just like there's cutbacks on the police, just like there's cutbacks elsewhere. Um, the whole maintenance effort issue is a huge issue that we're going to have to deal with if we don't vote for the tax hike. Um, but there's still $3.17 million. Uh, that's, a, that's a big chunk of money. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman or Vice President Renfleisch. Alderman Bowers. Thank you. Uh, would someone please explain to me, I think I read in the paper where the tax rate, if we left everything the way it is now, would stay the same, but we would generate $200,000 more, or did I read this wrong? Um, Alderman, Alderman Bowers, that's in the budget uh, that we just uh, passed, or not passed, but the, the amendments to the budget is that the tax rate stays the same. Right. With the tax rate staying the same, there is it actually adds 200000 to the tax levy. That was uh, part of the amendments to the general fund. So could we use that 200000 no, that is part of the amendments that were just made to the general fund that is on your uh, document that was provided by Alderman Hammond. So that's 200000 has been taken care of. Correct. It's, uh, it's not been voted on yet as far as being passed, but it was uh, obligated in the amendment toward the general fund, which will be passed or may be passed Wednesday. All right. Be. Alder Person Montemayor, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the library, even with maintenance of effort, the library is still taking a hit. There still will be furloughs and there will be layoffs and there were less purchases made, even with maintenance of effort. So it isn't as though maintenance of effort answers all the questions and now we have the whole full <coughs> library going again. We still don't. Thank you, Alder Person Montemayor. Alderman Raisler. Briefly. Uh, I understand your concerns about the unemployed and the tax rate, but I really think that if we took a look at how many unemployed people actually use the library for the books, the research for jobs, for their unemployment uh, benefits, and also at you know, the books for the kids, the movies that are free, um, I, I really think you'd be surprised. Thanks. Thank you, Alderman Raisler. <coughs> Any further discussion? I have no lights here at the moment. We have a motion on the floor regarding the library uh, proposed by Alderman Boren, seconded <coughs> by Alderman Raisler, to fund the library to maintenance of effort, $302,845 <coughs> above the proposed executive budget. Any further discussion? And to increase the tax levy. And to increase the tax levy uh, by approximately 12 cents per thousand or $12 per hundred thousand uh, dollars for the for 2011 Alderman Hammond thank you um, I guess I would you know in looking at this uh, it, it is a very difficult issue um, I would I would be more inclined to do something more in the middle um, if we're going to do anything at all as a council, I look at um, option number four, for example, allows them to fund their, the new items at the 2010. They'll still have the furlough days, um, but the amount needed to fund is about $140,000, which does not um, put a um, larger burden on our already overburdened taxpayers. Um, again, as we discussed earlier, we're not going to be kicked out of Eastern Shores in 2011. Um, this gets us part of the way there. Um, funds the critical services. We don't have to, um, again, there, there's no new items. They'll still have the internet. They'll still be all the services. They just have the furlough days. Um, so I guess I'd make a, uh, and I don't know if somebody throw something at me if I can't do this, but I'll make a, an amendment. I'd like to make an amendment that we uh, accept uh, or adopt number four, $140,500 tax. You can increase. ask Alderman Boren and Raisler uh, if they would but accept the friendly accept amendment. The amendment. Oh, friendly amendment. You have to smile when you do it. Though. Oh, do I? Yeah. <laughs> not, I'm not winking, though. No. Yeah. Uh, Council, the other option would be to vote yep. 
on this proposal, mm -hmm. and then if that doesn't fly, then make another motion for a lesser amount. I think that's probably the best. I proposal. think that's probably a little cleaner. <coughs> if we can stick to that, does anybody have any further discussion on the original proposal? Alderman Rindfleisch, we have Alderman Wangaman. Would you like to speak on that, sir? Yep. Please do. I guess my comment would be to ask the uh, council a question. Can we afford not to do this? We're looking at the future. This is a future investment in this country. This country, whether you believe it or not, is at war. And we're in a struggle that's going to last for a long time. Can we afford not to have the very best? Compare the number of engineers that this country graduates every year with the number of engineers that come out of Japan. And I think you'd fall on your you-know-what, because it's a big, big difference. We need to have the very best if we're going to triumph in this war. And make no mistake about it, we are at war as much as we were in World War II. I'm old enough to remember World War II very vividly. This is a struggle. <coughs> we're really up against the wall with the rest of the world. We cannot afford not to have the best. I look at this as an investment. I know there's people out there struggling to pay their taxes. I know what that means. I worked at a factory myself for many years, and I was laid off, and I know what that means, not to have a paycheck coming in. I understand that very, very well. But I think we cannot afford not to invest in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Wagaman. Alderman Bourne, did you have anything? No, I was just going to mention that I agreed with uh, Attorney McLean's scenario that we should vote on this, my motion and Alderman Raisler's second first, and then See how that goes. <coughs> President Kittleson. Yes, thank you, Mayor. And, and I, too, just a comment. When I look at the number of people who spoke on the library issue here, how important it is to so many. And as uh, Alderman Montemayor said, when we watched the promise of Sheboygan County, the library, the lake, uh, it's all such a big part of drawing people here to our community. So I, I think it's important that we do fund this maintenance of effort and uh, a tax levy increase of 12 cents uh, per thousand or equivalent is uh, something I think that uh, our citizens can, uh, would accept. Thank you. Thank you, President Kittleson. Vice President Rinflesh. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I don't know how that vote is going to go. Um, if it does not pass, and I know there's some other options as well, um, that I, I would also ask that uh, if we're going to look at raising the tax levy, um, then let's keep going. Let's raise it to bring the 198 for the police and the 107 for the public works, so I'll make it $24 or thereabouts per thousand. Um, but it does make sense to me to, 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 to meet maintenance effort while we're cutting elsewhere. Uh, so if we're gonna do it, then let's do it. Um, so if it fails, that's gonna be my motion, and it'll be only be $24 in all departments. Um, the main ones for me, the police and, plan and public works will be fully funded as well. Thank you, Vice President Rindfleisch. Alderman Heidemann. Thank you, Mayor. I guess um, I'd be happier uh, in voting to increase taxes, <clears throat> if I knew the organization we were increasing it for was going to participate, they've got over $400,000 in reserves. They, they're not going to go away if we don't, pass, we don't pass this. They've got money in reserve. I'd rather see a joint partnership with the city and the library. And using some of that money, they have people up here saying, uh, all, <laughs> what was that, an hour and a half? The library's going to go away. I thought, wow, if we don't pass anything, they might as well tear a library. Tear, tear me down. I don't think they tear me down when they got $400,000 in reserve. Okay, so I'd, quite honestly, I'd like to be a, have to be a partnership between both the library board and the city of Sheboygan to be able to maintain that effort, uh, maintain that $300,000. Thank you, Alderman Heidemann. Do we have any further discussion? I have no lights on the board here. Okay, um, now we, we, first I'll make it clear that this vote is not to pass the budget. Right. Okay, this she vote is to amendment. amend the proposed budget for the library fund. It does not pass it. Uh, a yes vote will to be to? It will be to decrease the funding to zero, add the 2845 in order to cover MOE for 2011, which will then have a tax levy increase of $0.12 cents per thousand for the full amount of 302845 a yes vote would do that. A yes vote will vote to pass it as amended. Roll call, please. 
to pass the, no, the amendment. Pass, pass the, the amendment. amendment. We're not passing the budget. The budget. <laughs> pass the amendment for for. Whose uh, idea was it to delay the whole thing? Three hundred two. He's in Florida. That was yours. He's in Florida. <laughs> This is just the amendment. Just the amendment. Of 302. To add that back in by using a tax levy of 12, 12 cents. cents. Mm -hmm. okay. Per thousand. Per thousand. I'm sorry. Okay, Hannah. Yes. Heidemann. No. Koth. No. Kittleson. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. No. Reisler. Yes. Sampson. No. Vanderweel. No. Wangeman. Aye. Boren? Aye. Bowers? No. Hammond? No. Oops. Six eyes, seven no's. Amendment fails. Okay, the amendment fails. Um, Alderman Hammond, you had an alternative? I did. And uh, again, I don't want there to be any misconception. I do not have any dislike for the library. I think it is a valuable resource. My wife uses it quite frequently. Um, I just think that we need to look at um, what the core services are. And again, the option number four, if you will, allows them to fund their new items um, and um, presumably avail other things. Um, we'll still have their furlough days. Um, but it only has a, a levy increase of $140,000 versus $302,000. Again, sounds like a small amount, but when it's coupled on top of the Sheboygan County increase, the LTC increase, and many others, those small amounts start to pile on top of each other. And so um, I make a motion, I'd make a motion that we accept uh, or increase the levy $140,500. Second. We have a motion and a second to go with number four. If I can have a clarification, Alderman Raisler. Uh, About six cents. Yeah, I can do the math. Okay. But what, I, what, what I'm wondering is uh, oh, that was moon funding of new items. That's new materials, I take it? Yes. Uh, books, et cetera. Correct. Okay, that's, that's what I was wondering. But thanks for that math tip anyway. You had the calculator. <laughs> um, okay, under discussion. Alderman Raisler, you're up. I'll defer. Okay, we have uh, Alderman Hammond okay. once again. Um, <coughs> actually, if uh, Director uh, Winkle might be willing to come back up there, we should just move you a chair up there, actually. There is one <coughs> there. I don't think he is. Part of the wellness program that uh, yeah. Alderman Kittleson was telling me earlier I need to partake in. I was huffing and puffing pretty good right. coming up the steps. Um, just to kind of clarify what um, Alderman Riesler put together, it says uh, the decrease, he had mentioned you guys had worked together to uh, uh, work some of these things out, but the decrease in funding reduction to 159 to reinstate the funding for new items current level. By um, decreasing the funding reduction to 159,000, basically adding another 140,000, what would that give you and what would that take away? Just to add a little more detail to this, if you wouldn't mind, please. Okay, let me take a look at this here. I want to make sure I'm saying the right thing. I think what that does is... Uh, yes, um, it's working off that 200,000 amount there in number two that includes furlough days and expenditure reductions, but it's not um, adding the funding in that would eliminate the need for those five furlough days. So it's as stated, there would be five furlough days. If when the library board receives this information, it proceeds along the lines that it did when it was looking at a budget at the $200,000 reduction level. Um, because the library board he has the responsibility to determine how to expend the funds. It would need to take action if this would pass in this form at <coughs> your meeting of November 24th. It would need to take action at its December meeting. But basically the intent would be that it would, the library board would be able to fund the purchase of new acquisitions at the 2010 level. Um, and would need to save expenditure dollars by continuing with the five single furlough days that would have been in effect this year, for example. Okay? 
So what would the extra 100,000, because I understand where the 40,500 mm -hmm. comes from, that's the, mm -hmm. the, the new books, new items at, at the 2010, what would that mm -hmm. other $100,000 do? Well, for example, um, to meet the 300,000 expenditure reduction, the um, library staff um, hours were changing from 40 hours for FT for full-time employees um, to 38. That that wouldn't be necessary, and that's what was that was what was driving the reduction of public service hours. So, other than the five-day furlough, that's a separate issue. So, by adding that extra hundred thousand or the 40,500, which again, for the new items, adding 100,000 gets the employees back up to 40 hours a week and mm -hmm. would allow the library to not have to adjust its, um, other than the five furlough days, mm -hmm. not have to adjust its um, public service hours. In other words, the library would be open longer than what was proposed here by funding the, that level. Yes, that's, that is a major distinction between the $200,000 reduction scenario and the 300,000. Um, there was no need to change the hours of service um, other than the five-day furlough. Right. On those, on those furlough days, Sharon, that's, those are days that the library is actually closed on those furlough days, correct? Yes, you're right, Mayor. Yes, those for those five single days. I take it, or are they single days? Um, they were in blocks in 2009, right. uh, one block in 2009, and in, in uh, 2010, it's five single days spread throughout the calendar. The next one is the day after Thanksgiving. And that's the last one for the year. That's a nice day not to work. We thought we'd parallel the city on that. <laughs> Ooh. City Hall. City Hall. There is a shot across the Pardon. So no, no. those rules for the city. I, anyway. I'm that agreeing. Was, that was a joke. That I'm was, agreeing. Okay. I just want to make right. sure, you know, but again. So, did I? Yeah, I just want to just, yeah. just to kind of clarify it. So the, uh, by increasing the levy, 140500 would be able to maintain our funding for new items at the 2010 level. Mm -hmm. um, staff would remain at 40 hours a, a week and the library hours would stay, it would not be adjusted. There would still right. be the five furlough days, which again, would be wherever deemed appropriate. I'm sure mm -hmm. you and your, uh, the board would determine what the best place to put those would be. Um, yes. So, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. I have another Alderman question. Bowers. Yes, I have a question for <laughs> What? What? Uh, I've often thought that the library opened too early in the morning, but you open at what, eight or nine? At nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. What would the be if we took the hours from nine and open up, let's say, 10 or 11? Because I notice when I go there early in the morning, it's mostly people my age reading the paper, <laughs> sleeping. That's because they're up at 5 a.m. Right? Yeah, That's right. Different. By then they got half their day in. <laughs> Well, you know, I can answer that several ways. One um, way is that people are standing outside waiting to get in at 9 o'clock. Yep, right. Uh, you've probably seen them since you seem to yep. go to the library early. Um, also, yes, the staff observes that um, older people, yep. retired people, let yes. me put it that way. For mature folks. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. Do um, like to use the library right. during the earlier hours that it's open, but they also use it throughout the well, period yeah. of time. Sure. Uh, the main thing is for the young children. Um, we look at different hours of service just as a matter of course, but also during times of budgetary constraint, mm -hmm. and we've had a series of those times, and so we've had continuing conversations with the youth services manager, in fact, more than one of them, um, and each uh, one of them, the two that we've worked with in these situations, has, has said that for the very young children, the early morning hours is the ideal time for them to visit the library as well. I guess maybe they get up early too, like the retired folks. So the concern is if you're cutting the morning hours, you're affecting the ability of the very young children with their parents to use the library, including uh, the story times and that sort of thing that's offered to them. Well, what I'm looking at is we're faced with a Kohler situation, which we don't know which way it's going to go, and I hope that they reach a settlement. If they don't, <clears throat> this is really going to affect this community, and, and a $12 increase or a $6 increase in their taxes, plus the school and uh, the county 
we're, we're looking at quite an increase here. So I was just wondering if we could still maintain the library and maybe cut a couple of hours, we might be able to pick up $100,000. Um, that's basically what the $300,000 reduction was doing. That's the main difference between the $200,000 reduction level and the $300,000. That's where we came in with um, closing at 6 on Tuesday and Thursday evening, 6 p.m. It wasn't a change in the morning, but it was a change in the evening hours. Evening, okay. So right. that was number six, reducing hours? No. Uh, number one. Number one. one. That's number one? That's actually included in number one in the, oh, in the, in the $300,000 reduction. Okay. I see five furlough days, okay. So that, that, uh, that was five furlough days, so are there hours in there too? Um, furlough days is number two. I may be looking at a different sheet, number sorry. One was, number one was furlough days and the reduction in hours. And reduction in hours. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I've got a different sheet in front of me. Oh. Please excuse me. Okay. So that was reducing hours. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. I, I hope I addressed that to your satisfaction. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Alderman Bowers and Sharon. Alderman Sampson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to point out to the folks in TV land that that was certainly not us making light of a very difficult situation with the laughter, uh, but sometimes just <laughs> laughing makes very tense situations go a little easier. So just wanted to make sure that it's not uh, looked upon as uh, that we're taking this matter too lightly. And the folks in TV land by this time of the night are probably watching TV <laughs> land. So. We've got recordings. <laughs> okay. I see no further lights in front of me. Would anybody like to comment on this? Yes, Vice President course. Rinfleisch? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I guess I, I'm, I'm not seeing the, the full difference between, well, the tax increase is less, we're still going to deal with uh, perhaps at least a maintenance of efforts issue by changing, uh, well, increasing the revenue, but not to the full hundred three hundred thousand um, dollars. So I still won't support it because ultimately, still putting, uh, I'm not raising the tax levy to put cops in the street, but I'm going to raise the tax levy for the library. Uh, that's tax cops versus books, and I don't think that's appropriate for us to do. Uh, and again, if if it passes that we're going to raise the tax levy for the library, then I would say let's raise the tax levy and fully fund uh, the police department and the public works department as well, um, which may double that. The other option is, um, and I was just thinking about uh, being creative, and um, sorry, my phone is on because I was using the calculator. Um, Good excuse. Every quarter we get our water bills, and uh, on there, there are certain items on the water bills, um, fire protection, I think it is, sewer, uh, and so on, that don't have anything to do with the water collection, it's simply collected. Is it possible for us to fund the library through that at a three point four million dollars? I don't believe so. I, you cannot year. charge fees on a library. I think that's statute, if I'm not mistaken. And if it would be on a water bill, it would be a fee. Not uh, on the tax libraries levy. must be funded off the tax levy. No, I, that's. I think it'd be interesting for people to that's see. That's my own. I that's like my own idea. knowledge, but Just, I, I believe uh, that's right. It's a shame, and I think you're probably right. But uh, it would be interesting to see that every quarter. I think it's something that was mentioned before. People could see exactly how much the library costs them every quarter, and maybe it's a deal, maybe it's not, but people can decide then. Yeah, that would be nice to do on a lot of services the city provides. But. Alderman Bourne? <coughs> Another question for Sharon. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you intensely waited until she sat down. I just thought of it. <laughs> You're one of those retired guys. Uh, Director Winkle, on the, if we go, with, the motion is on scenario number four right now. We're going to decrease the funding reduction to 159500 159, rather than putting the amount needed of the 14500 on the tax levy. Do you think your board would go along with taking that out of your, what was that, the fund you talked about, Alderman Hanna? The undesignated reserves. Undesignated. Uh, do you, rather than putting that on the levy, do you think that we're kind of meeting a halfway that you would be able to take that 14500 out of your undesignated fund? Well, the library does not have any undesignated funds. We were talking about them that when we were addressing Alderman Hanna's earlier question, all of the uh, funds that the library has available are reserved funds. They're designated for certain purposes. So there are no undesignated funds. 
And the other thing I would share with you is that if the library were to do that in some way from, from some source, then this additional funding um, above the proposed reduction would not apply towards maintenance of effort. So um, in 2012, if the maintenance of effort statutes remain the same, there'd still be quite a ways to go for the city to reach maintenance of effort, um, being a little bit of a hole there. Uh, so that's a comment about that way of addressing the funding situation. Thank you, Sharon and Alderman Boren. Is there any further discussion? Okay, the amendment before us right now states. <laughs> um, to decrease the funding reduction to 159500 to reinstate the funding for new items current 2010 level and still have furlough days. An I vote would be to do that. So an I vote will be to amend the proposed budget. Mm -hmm. Got it right that time. Mm -hmm. Roll call, please. Heideman? Aye. Cott? No. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Winfleisch? No. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? No. Vanderweel? No. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah. Aye. Nine eyes, four noes. Nine is a majority of the council. Motion carries. Alderman Rinfleisch. Move to hold the documents to Wednesday. <coughs> we have a motion to hold both documents until Wednesday's meeting. Second. Second. Um, if I can have a little input from the council before we adjourn Wednesday's meeting. Um, it's going to be a long meeting. Uh, it is presently scheduled for 5 o'clock, or for 7 o'clock, rather. <coughs> uh, it's, it's scheduled for 7 o'clock. Uh, I'm hoping at 7 gives people time to get some stuff done and that uh, we have a short meeting. Or do, if we would uh, like to uh, move it to 5 o'clock, that's an option. We can amend it. I opt for short meeting. <laughs> Do we have a second for a short meeting? <laughs> no guarantees. Can we okay, go to I don't, six? I don't hear any input, so I think we'll just keep Can it we at 7 o'clock. Can go to 6 o'clock and have a partially long meeting? That's okay. Yes, that's fine. Keep it at 7 o'clock on Wednesday. Why don't we try 6? Why don't we try 6? We have 50 in the schedule at 7 o'clock on Wednesday. Can we do 6? 7. 6 o'clock? Can we do 6? 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock? No. No? 7 o'clock. So it's already posted at seven o'clock. We we won't. I was thinking oh, maybe five oh. o'clock, and that way people come straight from work. I guess I have long license. I have a funny anyway, feeling there may be some oh, discussion. Oh, on passing things. So do we have any action to take here, sir? Besides adjourn, just to move that forward. We adjourn. Move to adjourn. Thanks. Okay, we adjourn. Why is that meeting? We have a motion to adjourn. In a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. See you Wednesday.